Are you happy with your life right now? Do you feel like you are living to the fullest? Or is there a sense that something essential is missing? In the relentless pursuit of success and happiness, have you ever stopped to question what it truly means to live a good life? Imagine facing life's inevitable challenges with unshakable calm and clarity. Picture yourself meeting every moment with wisdom and composure, regardless of the chaos that surrounds you. How would your life change if you could master your emotions and find peace amidst turmoil? This is not just a fantasy. Such a life is possible through the ancient yet ever-relevant teachings of Stoicism. A philosophy that has guided great minds through the ages, Stoicism offers profound insights into leading a fulfilling, balanced and truly contented life. Welcome to your trip through Stoicism, a way to find knowledge in a world full of uncertainty and anger. This guide is an invitation to learn more about a philosophy that can change not only the way you think, but also the way you live. You can learn the keys to virtue, happiness and resilience by studying the teachings of Stoic thinkers. These teachings have been around for a while and can still be used today. Let's begin. Just for a moment, imagine that the most important thing you can do to live a worthwhile, happy life isn't something you can buy, earn, or get from other people. It's already inside you, just waiting to be found and used. This isn't just a thought experiment. It's based on the knowledge of Stoicism, a theory that has helped countless people find peace, tranquility, and purpose in their lives over the centuries. Stoicism teaches us that the key to a good life is not praise from others or material wealth, but learning how to value ourselves through the virtues of temperance, courage, knowledge, and justice. It's a strong message that even though the outside world is chaotic and hard, we have the solid basis for our own happiness and well-being inside us. We're getting rid of the layers of social standards and self-doubt to find the timeless stoic principles that can change how we see the world and ourselves. This journey isn't just about getting better at yourself, it's also about regaining our true worth and learning how to live in line with our core values. You have come to the right place if you want to find inner freedom, resilience and satisfaction. We've all done it at some point or another, not appreciating ourselves enough. We settle and make concessions all the time, whether it's staying in a job that drains us, staying in relationships that don't make us feel better or not going after our dreams because we're afraid. Why do we do that though? Is it worry? Is it ease? It could be a mix of the two. Stoicism tells us that these outside things don't change our real worth, our soul. Stoicism shows us that how we react to our circumstances, not where we are, like a house or a jail, is what really describes us. It means realizing that we may not be able to control everything in our lives, but we do have complete control over how we think, feel, and act. Take a look. When we settle for less than we deserve, aren't we saying that other people and things have more power over us than we do? Stoicism tells us to question that idea. We should ask ourselves, does this situation fit with my values? Am I reacting to this in a way that shows how valuable I really am? Not only that, but Stoicism doesn't just leave us sad if the answer is no. No, it gives us power. Look, it tells you that you have the power to change how you see things, how you react, and in turn, how your world is. Remember this Stoic advice the next time you feel like taking less than you deserve. You are not your job title, your relationship status, or the size of your bank account. Remind yourself of this. Your worth depends on how well you can stick to your ideals and always act with courage, knowledge, and honesty, no matter what. We shouldn't blame ourselves for our problems. Instead, we should give ourselves the tools to see and take control of the things we can change. Let's not settle for less not because we think we deserve it or are cocky, but because we know how valuable we are. 
The strength and resilience that come from knowing who we are and what we stand for will help us deal with the problems that life throws at us. We're not just living when we do that. We're growing in the most stoic way. Stoicism, which has a deep understanding of how people work, doesn't tell us to brag or boost our egos. The acceptance of our own efforts and virtues, however, is encouraged. Why? Because honoring our successes isn't just a way to feel good about ourselves. It's also a way to honor the hard work, focus, and persistence that got us there. It has to do with keeping our promises to follow through on our goals and beliefs. Let us break it down. Virtues like temperance, justice, courage, and knowledge are at the heart of Stoicism. Most of the time, these virtues are what help you reach your goals, no matter how big or small they are. It might have taken bravery to apply for that job, smarts to deal with the problems that came up, or discipline, which is a form of moderation, to clean out that room. It's not just the result that you're undervaluing when you say your success was due to luck, or that anyone could have done it. It's also the virtues you used to get there. In that case, how do we change this idea? How can we start to be proud of what we've done without becoming cocky? Being stoic means being honest and balancing your emotions. For the sake of the truth, not your pride, it means saying, yes, I worked hard for this. Yes, I faced challenges and overcame them. And yes, this achievement is a reflection of my effort and my virtues. Okay, now I want you to think of something new you can do. It does not matter how big or small it is. The virtues you used to get there come to mind. Maybe you were very disciplined, brave or smart when you step it out of your comfort zone or learn it how to solve your problem. Take a moment to recognize the virtues that led to the accomplishment, whatever it is. You're not supposed to pat yourself on the back during this exercise. Instead, it's meant to help you see the truth about your character and work. Practicing this stoic habit can change how we see our own wins and how we see ourselves. It helps us stop being fake humble and start really appreciating our own strengths and skills. It teaches us that recognizing our accomplishments is about recognizing the virtues we've lived and the hard work we've put in, not about our egos. It happens all the time, right? Sometimes it feels noble, generous, and even brave to do things like stay late at work to help a co-worker, skip your morning run to make breakfast for your family, or put your own goals on hold to help someone else's. But here's the catch. Putting other people's needs ahead of your own all the time can make you tired, angry, and lose your sense of who you are. If you try to fill cups from an empty jar, you'll get nowhere. Stoicism isn't about being cold or self-centered. Instead, it puts a lot of weight on ethics and making the world a better place. But it also shows us how important it is to take care of ourselves. Why? Because taking care of yourself isn't selfish. It's what makes it possible to care for others well. Stoicism tells us that before we can help other people, we need to make sure our own physical, mental and spiritual well-being is in good shape. Let us break this down a bit. Understanding the difference between what we can control and what we can't is something that Stoicism teaches us. We are in charge of our own thoughts, ideas, deeds, and yes, even self-care. No matter how much we want it to be different, we can't directly affect the health and happiness of other people. What we can change, though, is how ready we are to help, support, and love the people around us. We need to start by taking care of ourselves. How much more gentle, understanding and present are you for the people in your life when you're well rested, healthy and at peace? How can you help their health and happiness even more effectively? Mental and emotional resilience are just as important as physical health in this situation. It means having the inner strength to care about others, give them good advice and be a source of security and strength for them. How then do we find this middle ground? How can we make sure that helping others doesn't mean we forget about our own needs? 
First, you have to realize that self-care isn't a nice-to-have or an aside. It's important. It means setting aside time for things that make us feel better, like working out, meditating, reading, or just being alone for a few minutes. It means being able to set limits and say no when we need to. It also means doing these things not just to treat ourselves, but because we want to be our best selves for the people we care about. You are being asked to think of one way you can put your own health first this week. It could be making a promise to go for a walk every day, making time for a sport you enjoy, or setting limits on your work hours. When you do something to take care of yourself, know that it's not just for you. It's also a way to make sure that when you do help other people, you're being your best self. Stoicism teaches us how important it is to look at ourselves with an open mind. This means being honest about our weaknesses as well as our strengths. We should not think about our worth in a selfish way, but in a fair and reasonable way. Why is it so hard for us to take compliments? Most of the time, it's because we have a skewed view of ourselves. It's possible that we're focused too much on our flaws, or we may have been taught that recognizing our strengths makes us cocky. But here's a stoic view to think about. Being humble doesn't mean rejecting our skills. It means accepting them in a grounded and realistic way. It's about seeing ourselves as they really are, without the ego or fear getting in the way. Stoicism tells us that recognizing our skills and accomplishments does not make us less valuable. Accepting praise with grace is a good way to become more self-aware and objective. It helps us understand who we really are by allowing us to see the virtues we have and the work we've put in. When someone says nice things about us, they're usually noticing something real and admirable about us. We miss out on the chance to see ourselves through someone else's eyes and understand how we affect the world around us when we ignore these times. How can we get better at taking compliments? It starts with changing the way we think. Try to see praise as a mirror that shows off your virtues and hard work. Instead of avoiding the truth, take a moment to think about what they said. You can practice by simply saying, thank you. Don't downplay or avoid the compliment. Just be thankful that it was given. Additionally, Stoicism tells us to make the most of these times by reflecting. Ask yourself, what did I do to deserve this praise? What does it say about my attempts and virtues? This isn't about stroking your ego. It's about recognizing and understanding the part of you that can do great things and make a difference. Have you ever been faced with a choice that seemed easy, but left you stunned and unable to make a choice? There's more going on here than just not knowing what to do. This fear of making the wrong choice is a sign of a deeper problem, a lack of trust in oneself. It's like we're standing on the edge of a diving board and looking down into the pool below. We know we need to jump, but we can't. In this fog of uncertainty, Stoicism shines like a light. For us, it shows us that making choices based on knowledge and reason is more important than being sure of what will happen. Stoicism tells us that we have full control over the process of making choices, but not over how those decisions turn out. It means making decisions that are in line with our ideals, being honest, and accepting that the results, no matter what they are, are just the way life is. What is it that makes us afraid to choose? Most of the time, it's because we don't want to make the wrong decision, which could lead to results we see as fails or mistakes. Stoicism, on the other hand, asks us to change how we view failures and mistakes. Every result in the Stoic perspective is a chance for growth and learning. Failures don't exist, lessons do. When we look at things from this point of view, we can trust ourselves to make brave and sure choices, knowing that whatever happens will help us grow and understand more. How, though, do we learn to trust ourselves? How can we, so to speak, get better at making decisions? The first step is to accept knowledge and reason. 
Take some time to think about your choice before making one. Ask yourself, does this choice fit with what I believe in? Am I acting in a moral way? When you base your choices on your core values and good sense, you can be sure that you made them with the best of goals and knowledge, no matter what happens. Stoicism tells us that we should accept the results of our choices and learn from them. We can learn something from every event, even if it's not what we wanted. This is a call to think about what went well and poorly and how we can use these lessons in the future. Self-trust grows when we think about and learn from our experiences. It reassures us that we can handle the rough seas of life, make choices that are in line with our values, and learn from each one. Stoicism shows us how to make smart choices, especially about how to use our minds. It says that focusing on our flaws and failures and berating ourselves for every mistake we think we've made is like trying to steer a ship without paying attention to the wind and waves. We're focused on the wrong things. The Stoic philosophy tells us that achieving perfection is a pipe dream. Instead, the goal is growth, which means taking steady, well thought out moves. Sign six, critiquing yourself too much. Why do we fall into the trap of being too hard on ourselves when we want to be better people? Most of the time, it's because we hold ourselves to impossible standards, ones we would never hold anyone else to. We forget that part of being human is having flaws, making mistakes, and most importantly, being able to learn and grow from them. Self-compassion and the desire of progress over perfection are two strong Stoic remedies for this kind of self-imposed injustice. From a Stoic point of view, self-compassion doesn't mean cuddling up to ourselves or finding reasons for our flaws. How we treat ourselves should be the same as how we treat a good friend, with kindness, understanding and forgiveness. It means realizing that failures are a normal part of life and not a reflection of who we are as people. If we mess up, a stoic person wouldn't criticize themselves, but instead would ask, what can I learn from this? How can I grow? To adopt this way of thinking, we have to change how we see our journey. Every effort, every try, even the ones that don't lead to the results we wanted, is a step forward. Our mantra will be progress, not perfection. This doesn't mean we stop trying to get better or don't care about it anymore. Instead, it means we work harder to grow. But we know that growth isn't always straight, is full of challenges, and is beautifully imperfect. Why does it seem so simple to compare things? Some of it comes from the fact that people naturally compare their own worth and achievements to those of those around them. However, this tendency is increased to a level that has never been seen before in the age of social media. We see images of other people's lives all the time that only show the good times and never the bad. This makes us wonder if our own experiences are worth living and what they mean. Stoicism has a powerful cure for this sickness, becoming more self-aware and thankful for our trip. As it says, it tells us to look inward and think about our own growth, virtues, and the progress we've made. Being alone or not caring about other people is not what Stoicism encourages. Instead, it encourages finding inspiration over comparing yourself to others. It teaches us to respect the accomplishments and virtues of others without making our own less important or less advanced. To avoid falling into the comparison trap, how can we use Stoic principles? First, by being aware and noticing when we start to compare our behind the scenes to someone else's feature reel. It's a way to remember that social media is just a collection of carefully chosen photos and not a true picture of daily life. Second, Stoicism teaches us how important it is to focus on the things we can change, like our actions, our attitudes and our virtues. These are the seeds that our unique trip will grow from. Focusing on taking care of these seeds helps us grow a garden that is full of personal meaning without the need for outside approval or comparison. Lastly, 
Being thankful is very important. As we learn to be thankful for our own experiences, difficulties and successes, we stay in the present and enjoy how full our lives are. This doesn't make us lazy. Instead, it gives us the strength to seek growth and change from a place of happiness, not failure. Sometimes you forget to do the things you want to do, like take that class, start that hobby, or even take care of yourself. A lot of us do it. This isn't just because we don't have enough time or money. It's often because we don't see our own worth. It's like telling ourselves, I'm not worth the work. But here's the thing. Stoicism, with its deep understanding of morality and human nature, pushes us to see self-improvement not just as a task, but as a way to respect ourselves. Stoicism tells us that our ability to think and be good makes us unique and that the only way to find real happiness is to work on these things. The Stoic philosopher Seneca compared life to a garden. Just as a plant needs steady care and attention to grow, so does our inner world. If we don't work on our personal growth, it's like not taking care of a garden, neither will grow. But why do we put off investing in ourselves so often? Sometimes it's because we're stuck in the trap of instant satisfaction and choose short-term pleasures over long-term happiness. And sometimes it's because of something deeper, like low self-esteem or thinking we're not worth the work. Stoicism, on the other hand, tells a different story. It says that every person has natural worth and the ability to be good. Putting money into our own growth, whether it's by picking up new skills, trying new hobbies, or taking care of ourselves, shows that we know and respect our worth. In light of Stoic thought, how can we begin to believe in ourselves? It starts with changing the way we think. Self-improvement needs to become an important part of our lives that we can't do without. This doesn't mean making big changes to our lives all at once. It means investing in ourselves in small ways over time. A simple way to do this could be to read a book about something that interests us, meditate for a few minutes every day, or start a sport that makes us happy. Stoicism also teaches us the value of thinking things through and looking in the mirror. This helps us figure out our skills and weaknesses, which guides our personal business efforts. It gives us a sense of purpose and direction to regularly look at our lives, set goals, and think about how we're doing. Self-reflection and setting goals aren't just about reaching success markers outside of ourselves. They're also about making sure our actions are in line with our values, developing our virtues, and living a life with purpose and meaning. Accepting the idea of lifelong learning is another important part. The Stoics thought that becoming wise was a process, not a goal. Having an open mind and being interested in new things can change how we think about personal spending. It's not a job, it's a journey, a chance to see how much life has to offer in terms of information and experience. Living in line with our ideals and beliefs is the only way to truly feel validated. The Stoics thought that the only things we could really manage were our own thoughts, acts and reactions. Marcus Aurelius said it so well, what bothers us is not other people's ideas, but how we think about those views. At its core, why do we feel the need to seek outward validation? A deep-seated fear of not being enough is often at the root of it. It's easy to lose track of our own path when the world is full of messages telling us what we should be, do, or have. Stoicism, on the other hand, encourages us to turn our attention inward and concentrate on improving our character and leading a virtue-filled life. It shows us that real happiness and peace don't come from other people's praise, but from knowing we've been true to ourselves. How then can we break free from the ties of outside approval? Being aware of yourself is the first step. By being aware of how much we want to be liked, we can start to question why we do the things we do. Are we working toward a goal because it fits with our values or because we want praise? 
Stoicism tells us to regularly think about ourselves, to check our goals to make sure they are in line with our own values and principles. Developing self-sufficiency is another stoic practice that can help us fight the need for approval from other people. This doesn't mean shutting ourselves off or not caring about other people. It means being happy and satisfied with ourselves and realizing that we are whole just the way we are. Another Stoic teacher, Epictetus, stresses the value of concentrating on what we can control and letting go of what we cannot. When we work on being happy inside, we depend less on outside sources of approval. Stoicism also tells us to change how we think about success. Stoicism teaches us to measure success by our capacity to live in accordance with our beliefs rather than by external praise or accomplishments. The quest of virtue, the application of reason, and the development of resilience in the face of life's difficulties are the keys to success from a stoic viewpoint. It feels like we're in a thick forest where the air is heavy, the path isn't clear, and every step is hard. If we stay in a bad situation, like a toxic workplace or a relationship that makes us feel unappreciated, it's usually because we truly believe that we don't deserve better. But this is where Stoicism is both a mirror and a map for us. The Stoics thought that our surroundings can have a big effect on our ability to be good and happy. However, they also stressed that it was our duty to shape our surroundings and pick the right people to be around. Marcus Aurelius tells us that our inner peace is not based on what is happening around us, but on how we react to it. Why do we put up with bad situations? Most of the time, it's because we don't believe we can change. We may be afraid of the unknown, hold on to what we know, or question our worth. Stoicism fights these fears and doubts by telling us to see how valuable we are and how much control we have over our actions and thoughts. It tells us to question the idea that we are stuck and to understand that most of the time we can change our situations or how we think about them. Stoicism gives us tools to get around and change the places we're in. The development of internal resilience and liberty is a crucial Stoic practice. For this reason, we shouldn't be indifferent or detached. Instead, Marcus Aurelius suggests that we build our inner citadel so that we can stay strong and true to our values, even when things are bad and chaotic. Building a strong inner core makes us less vulnerable to the bad things going on around us and more able to make decisions that are good for our health. The idea of living in harmony with nature is another Stoic concept that can help us. This means trying to find balance in our own lives and in the world around us. This means that we actively look for or make settings that help us grow, be healthy and be happy. It means realizing that we deserve respect, kindness and good relationships with others and choosing not to settle for less. In real life, finding places that help us grow could mean setting limits in our personal relationships, looking for new job chances, or even changing our social groups to include more positive and helpful people. It also means putting time and effort into creating a personal space by doing things like writing, meditating, or hobbies that are good for our mental and emotional health. What is it about fear that makes it so strong? Often, it's because we know very well what we have to lose. We have clear images in our minds of failing, of wasting time and effort, and of how other people might judge us. Even though Stoicism recognizes our fears, it asks us to think about what we have to gain. We are told to compare our fears to the chances of growing, being happy, and making our dreams come true. Stoicism tells us that the practice of virtue or doing the best that fits our nature is a worthwhile goal in and of itself, no matter what happens. The premeditation of sins, or what we now call negative visualization, is one of the stoic techniques that can help us get over our fear of following our dreams. This means thinking about the worst case scenarios, not to focus on them, 
but to lessen their power over us by picturing the hard things that could happen and knowing that we can handle them. A lot of the time, our fears aren't as scary as we thought they would be. It doesn't mean we stop caring about risks or become careless. Instead, it means we approach our dreams with a measured view, knowing that failure is possible, but not the end. It's a step on our way to growth. Amor Fati, which means love of fate, is another stoic idea that can inspire us to follow our dreams. This is the idea that we should welcome whatever life brings us with joy, not just resignation. When we follow our dreams with the help of Amor Fati, we let all kinds of events happen to us, including wins, mistakes, joys, and sadness. These are all normal parts of being human. This understanding frees us from the fear that holds us back and lets us move forward with confidence and drive. It is very important for us to act in line with our own virtues and possibilities, according to Stoicism. It tells us that our real worth isn't based on what other people think of us, but on how committed we are to living a good life and working hard to reach our goals with honesty, courage and integrity. In this light, being afraid to follow our dreams is not only something that stops us from succeeding, it also stops us from having a life that is truly ours. Why do we forget this important stoic lesson so frequently? Part of the reason is that we naturally want to connect with others and feel like we're important. If we don't watch out, this can make us look for our worth in other people's views or in the goals of success we reach. Stoicism, on the other hand, tells us that real worth comes from living in line with our nature and virtues. Epictetus said very well that the best way to get freedom is not to get what we want, but to get rid of what we want. This concept has a big impact on how we think about our worth. Real freedom and happiness don't come from approval from other people, but from understanding and accepting our own worth. Stoicism tells us to stop focusing on what we can do for other people and start working on improving our character. It tells us that our worth is not based on the titles we have, the money we have, or the support we get, but on our promise to live a good life and always act with honesty, kindness, and courage, no matter what. Not that accomplishments and praise don't matter. They do. What I mean is that they are not what make us valuable. Our worth is built into us and can't be changed, just like the stars in the sky at night. Realizing this frees us from always looking for approval from other people. How can we develop this stoic awareness of our own value? Self-reflection is the first step and it involves looking inward to recognize and value our virtues, efforts and resilience. It means showing appreciation for our skills, character and promise, knowing that these are the things that really show how valuable we are. It also means learning to separate our sense of worth from other people's views, which change, and from the short-term nature of accomplishments. This distance isn't a sign of indifference, it's a way of seeing things and figuring out what's important in the big picture of our lives. This feeling can come from a lot of different places, like past experiences, social norms, or personal mistakes. When we compare our trip to others, we only see the best parts of their lives and are very aware of what goes on behind the scenes in our own. We question our value because of this comparison which is driven by the false belief that happiness is a limited resource that is only given to those who deserve it. Stoicism tells us to get rid of these false ideas and see that happiness is not a prize, but a way of life. It asks us to think about our values, make sure that our actions are in line with these values, and to find joy in the pursuit of morality and the practice of reason. To be stoic, we must focus on what we can change, our thoughts, actions, and reactions, and let go of what we can't. This way of looking at things gives us the power to make our own happiness through the choices and emotions we have every day. How can this stoic way of looking at happiness work for us? 
It starts with changing the story we tell ourselves about being worthy. We need to fight the idea that being happy depends on accomplishments, approval from others, or being perfect. Believing that happiness comes from being good, making the best, decisions we can, and enjoying the present moment is a better way to think about it. Stoicism also emphasizes the value of being thankful. When we practice thankfulness, we change our attention from what we don't have to what we do have, from what we think we don't have enough of to the wealth in our lives. This change in viewpoint is very important for feeling like you deserve happiness because it lets you see the good things, chances and possibilities in your daily life. Stoicism helps us remember how important it is to have friends and family. Being happy isn't something you do by yourself. By building important relationships and supporting each other, we know that our worthiness for happiness is backed not only by ourselves, but also by the love and knowledge of those around us. While we learn about the wisdom of Stoicism together, let us remember that our lives are like canvases that we can paint with the bright colors of virtue, resilience and happiness. Don't forget that you are the mastermind behind your own happiness and the builder of your own fate. Even though the path is full of difficulties, it also has the possibility for a lot of growth, happiness and satisfaction. You deserve to be happy, you can make your dreams come true and you deserve all the love and success that comes your way. Did you know that the Stoics had a secret tool that could protect them from the chaos and mental turmoil that being around tough people could cause? Imagine having such a tool, a mental shield that keeps you safe from the bad vibes that other people might try to send your way. It's not just a piece of old history, it's a useful plan that can change your life right now. Stoicism is a strong tool for dealing with difficult bosses, grumpy family members and other people who sap your energy. We are now going to talk in more detail about how you can use these Stoic principles to not only survive hard times, but also grow in them. Building a life of happiness, resilience and deep personal freedom is more important than just getting by. You've come to the right place if you've ever felt pulled down by someone else's negativity or if you're just looking for a calmer life in this busy world. Making a decision about how much we let outside forces, especially a narcissist, affect our inner peace and tranquility is at the heart of this idea. Marcus Aurelius said, You have power over your mind, not over outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. This strong quote hits home when we have to deal with a narcissist. As the saying goes, our real power is not in changing the narcissist or their behavior. Those things are often out of our hands, but in changing how we deal with and talk to them. When we deal with a narcissist, the only things we can really change are how we respond, how we feel, and how much mental space we give them. It's not easy, especially when we're feeling emotional and the narcissist is a big part of our lives, like a family member, a partner, or even a co-worker. The wise words of Seneca go along with this approach. We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. When we're dealing with a narcissist, our worries and stress are often made worse by our fears and hopes of what they will say or do next. By using Seneca's understanding, we can tell the difference between the real effects of what others do and the mental pain we cause them. This doesn't make the problems a narcissist causes seem less important. Instead, it gives us the power to take back our mental space by focusing on the present instead of the worst case scenarios. Let's look at this in more detail. Picture yourself carrying around a bag every day and every time the narcissist does something bad, like try to control you or say something hurtful, they add a rock to it. It's heavy, wearing out and making you move more slowly. With stoicism, we learn that we can stop putting more rocks in our backpacks. It's not possible to change the narcissist, but we can change how their behaviors make us feel. To lessen their influence in our lives, 
we must first choose to shift our attention away from them. This means that we have to work at moving our thoughts and energies toward things and people that make us feel better, like activities that make us happy and calm. Setting mental and physical limits that keep us safe is what it's all about. This could mean limiting our contacts with the narcissist, changing the way we talk to them so they don't get ideas on how to hurt us, or even cutting off all ties with them. But it's important to be aware of how hard this process can be on your emotions. Stoicism doesn't mean hiding our feelings. It means recognizing them, trying to understand them, and then making smart choices about what to do next. If you have a selfish parent or child, you're not just dealing with a bad person. You're also dealing with the loss of the caring, helpful relationship you deserve. It's a normal part of grieving, and you should let yourself go through it. Get help from a therapist, do something artistic like writing or painting to calm down and lean on friends or groups that can help you. You can use these steps to do more than just get away from bad things. They can also help you heal and grow. Focusing on our inner fortress, which refers to our inner refuge of peace and resilience, is something we learn to do when we practice stoicism. We're not being mean to the narcissist by reducing their influence in our lives. We're just putting our own mental and emotional health first. We're making the choice that our peace of mind is the most important thing and that no one can bother it. Don't forget that it's okay to be sad, to cry and to ask for help. Take steps to become better and happier and make sure your inner fortress is strong enough that no outside chaos can get in. When you're dealing with a narcissist, stoicism means finding power in calm and choosing to focus on what really matters, your peace, your happiness, and your growth. Narcissists often put on a show of being better than others, whether it's through intelligence, beauty, wealth, or a mix of these things. They don't just put on this front for show, it's a big part of who they are and keeps them from facing their weaknesses and fears. But when we start to see through this mask and question its truth, we're not doing it on purpose. We're just following a stoic practice of finding the truth, of removing the layers of fiction to find the truth below. But how should we do this? First, we need to ground ourselves in the concept of stoic neutrality and figure out what we can control and what we can't. Our goal is not to change the narcissist, that is out of our hands, but to change how we see them, which will make them less powerful over our feelings and actions. Instead of addressing the narcissist directly or trying to bring them down, you might choose to quietly question their stories when you see them showing off their inflated sense of self-worth. One easy way to do this is to ask the narcissist, how did you come to that conclusion? Or can you tell me more about that? These questions, asked with real interest and without judging, can make them and the people around them think about how true their claims are. But you should be very careful and aware when doing this, putting your own safety and well-being first. The Stoic philosophy tells us not to get into fights that make us feel bad inside. Instead, it says we should try to keep our emotions and tranquility in check, no matter what happens outside. This means knowing when to interact with others and when to stay away, always putting our own peace first. When you show distant interest, you're not directly challenging the narcissist's view of themselves. Instead, you're asking them and yourself to look into the truth. This kind of soft questions can slowly bring down their inflated ideas without being rude or angry, but by asking them to think about it. You might find that their power over you decreases, which lets you view the situation and the person with more objectivity. The stoic practice of prososh, or focused awareness, in which we stay fully present and conscious of our thoughts, words and actions, is consistent with this approach. By staying mindfully aware, we can handle our interactions with the narcissist with grace and wisdom, making sure we stay true to our values and dedicated to our search for tranquility. 
you can find the truth in a kind, non-confrontational way by challenging the narcissist's idealized self-image from a place in your life that is less important. Following the stoic virtues of knowledge, courage, justice and temperance, it's about slowly peeling back the layers of what's really going on. Not only do we protect our own peace of mind, but we also give the narcissist a chance to grow and think on themselves, even if it's only in a roundabout way. This process of becoming more self-aware and mending is not idle. We have to be ready to be involved, have guts, and face sometimes painful truths about ourselves. Focusing on ourselves, our growth, and our well-being is what this path is all about, not on the narcissist or changing how they act. Being self-aware and having good character are important parts of Stoicism, which fits nicely with the healing journey. It makes us think about our own feelings, responses, and the things that make us who we are. According to Seneca, no one has the power to have everything they want, but it is in their power not to want what they don't have and to cheerfully put to good use what they do have. This is very true in therapy. It means seeing our current problems or limitations not as permanent parts of our lives, but as opportunities to learn and grow. It's about moving our attention from getting approval from other people, especially those who can't give it to us in a healthy way, to getting support and kindness from within ourselves. Therapy is a safe place to think about ourselves and grow. We can talk about our feelings, experiences, and how our relationships affect us without fear of being judged. The point is to get over the hurts caused by bad relationships, understand our own worth, and understand that our worth doesn't depend on the approval or respect of a narcissist or anyone else. As part of treatment, we do stoic reflection, which means we look at our lives and decisions with a healthy dose of bravery and knowledge. We question the ideas that have kept us in unhealthy relationships and may have caused us to look for approval from people who can't give it to us in a healthy way. Self-examination is a key part of letting go of the need for praise from other people, which gives us back our freedom and liberty. But therapy isn't just a way to separate ourselves from things. It's also a way to build something new inside ourselves. Finding happiness, love and peace on our own terms and making a life that fits with our core values and goals is what it's all about. This fits with the stoic goal of a good life, where happiness comes from living a good life, not from praise or ties with other people. Getting treatment and working on yourself is a strong way to fight back against the negative a narcissist tries to impose. It's a statement that we are more than the parts they've given us in their story and that we have the strength and knowledge to write our own. Stoicism is all about realizing that our power lies in our ability to control our reactions, tend to our inner yard, and live in line with reason and nature. Therapist visits and working on yourself aren't always easy. We have to be strong to show our weaknesses, face our fears, and venture into the unknown. It is also a path full of hope, because as we peel back the layers of pain and self-doubt, we find the strong, lively self that has always been there, ready to be found and honored. In the spirit of Stoicism, therapy teaches us that the greatest freedom comes from within. It's the freedom to choose how we feel, how we react, how we treat others, and how we live our whole lives. This process of healing and growth is a testament to our resilience and potential for change. It tells us that no matter what problems we face, we have the power to find peace, joy, and satisfaction inside of ourselves. I think we should go through this journey with the bravery of a Stoic, seeing treatment and personal growth as chances to make our own lives better. Let's stay on this path of self-awareness and virtue, understanding that every step we take will lead to a more honest, strong, and happy life. Stoicism tells us that we have full control over our thoughts, feelings and deeds, but not over what happens in the outside world or what other people do. 
This idea gives us a lot of power, especially when we're dealing with a narcissist whose actions can feel like they are directly attacking our mental health. Let us break this down a bit. The narcissist may try to irritate, trick or upset you with their words or deeds because that is how they are wired. Your first thought might be to fight back, reply in kind or get involved in the argument. Yet, this is exactly where Stoicism offers a different path, one of peace, calm and inner tranquility. Not denying or stifling your feelings is not the same thing as choosing to control your reactions. It means recognizing your feelings and then consciously choosing how you want to behave. In this case, you might choose not to reply at all or take a moment to pause, breathe and think before answering. The important thing is to understand that you have control over how you react. The narcissist does not have control over your thoughts. You are in charge of your own mind. Mindfulness and practice are needed for this approach to work. You need to become very aware of what makes you feel bad and how your habits control your responses. It means making a promise to pay attention to your ideas and feelings without acting on them right away. Stoic activities, like writing in a notebook or meditative thought, can be very helpful in this situation because they help you take a step back, see things logically instead of emotionally, and decide how to react in a way that fits your values and your desire for peace. You are being very stoic by refusing to play the narcissist's game and choosing calmness and detachment over engagement and conflict. You are practicing the virtue of apathia, or freedom from passion, which is not the absence of feeling, but the absence of disturbance. You are living up to the stoic ideal of staying calm when provoked. If you take this stance, you're not giving up or running away. You're saying, I am the master of my soul, the guardian of my peace. Your actions cannot penetrate the fortress of my mind unless I allow them to. It's a statement of independence, a claim of power, and a promise to your own well-being. By using this tactic, we not only protect ourselves from the bad effects of the narcissist's behavior, but we also develop a stronger sense of self-awareness and resilience. We learn to handle the world with peace of mind because we know that our inner peace can't be taken away. The freedom to choose how to react to the world around us, to live by our values and to keep our tranquility despite the difficulties we face is the greatest form of freedom. Let's keep in mind that we have the power to protect our mental space, manage our responses and live a life of honor, peace and strength. This isn't just a way to deal with narcissists, it's also a plan for living a good, thoughtful life. Now we'll talk about the concepts of Stoicism and 11 things that you need to get rid of right away. Perhaps you're wondering why there was silence. Honestly, viewers, silence is the key to happiness and mental peace. It gives us a chance to think, relax and get back in touch with ourselves. We make room for growth, focus and tranquility in our lives by eliminating these particular things. Tell me, what are these things we need to say goodbye to? I'll not only tell you about these 11 things, but I'll also give you ideas and tips on how to get rid of them for good. Don't forget that getting rid of these things may not be easy, but it's important. Getting rid of things that don't serve us anymore helps us grow as people and live a fuller life. So get ready to clear out your life and find real peace inside, starting now. Number one, self-defeating. When we're thinking about ourselves, we often have a negative and self-critical conversation that turns out to be harmful. This kind of negative self-talk has a huge impact because it lowers our self-esteem, makes us feel less worthy and stops us from growing as people. Today is the day to break out of these bad habits and develop an attitude full of self-compassion and positive mantras. The famous philosopher Marcus Aurelius said, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. 
This quote reminds us that the things we think can change the way our lives turn out. So, it's important to choose thoughts that help us instead of ones that get in the way of our growth. When we compare ourselves to others, question ourselves, or have a skewed view of our own skills, we often start to talk badly to ourselves. To get free from these ties, we must first be aware of our bad thoughts. We must accept that they are there, but we must not let them define who we are. Instead, replace them with self-compassion and positive mantras. It is important to develop habits that help us keep a good attitude as we work to improve ourselves. Start by being grateful. Being thankful helps us shift our attention from what we don't have to what we do have. Surrounding ourselves with positive things like inspiring books, motivational talks, or friends who are there for us is another useful tip. Doing things that make us happy and satisfied can also drown out the voices of self-doubt. It's important to remember that we can choose our thoughts. If we constantly replace negative thoughts with positive ones, we can change our inner world into one of strength, resilience and self-love. Number 2. Bad Relationships Relationships that are bad for us can poison our minds and stop us from growing. These relationships, which are full of bad vibes, drama and disrespect, seep into our lives like poison, stealing our happiness and energy. We need to be aware of how these relationships affect us and find the strength to cut ties with people who are bad for us. The first thing we need to do to get out of bad situations is to surround ourselves with positive people who will help us. We need to look for people who are positive, inspiring and truly care. Getting close to the right people lets us soak up their good vibes, which helps us grow into the best versions of ourselves. Don't forget that the people we spend time with make us who we are. Setting clear limits and putting our own health first are also important ways to get rid of unhealthy relationships. The great philosopher Socrates said, an unexamined life is not worth living. Take some time to think about which relationships are bad for your growth and should be avoided. Be honest with yourself and find the strength to cut these unhealthy ties. It might hurt and be hard, but taking care of your mental, social and spiritual health is very important. Remember most of all that you have the power and the right to protect your happiness and peace. Bad habits are number three. Taking on bad habits can hurt our lives in many ways, including our minds and bodies. These habits, like drinking too much, smoking too much, or eating too much, tend to take over our lives and keep us stuck in a circle of self-destruction. But it's important to be aware of these bad habits and work hard to get rid of them from our lives. Sometimes it's hard to face our fears head on because they're so ingrained in our daily lives and make us feel safe. But if we admit that we need to change and grow as people, we are in charge of our own lives. Another useful way to get rid of bad habits is to replace them with good ones. Instead of drinking too much or smoking too much as a way to deal with stress, we can try better alternatives like working out, meditating or being creative. We can fill the void with activities that feed our souls by dealing with the problems that make us do these bad things. Getting strong help is another important part of getting rid of these bad habits. Getting together with people who share our goals for personal growth and well-being can give us the support and responsibility we need to get through these problems. Seneca, a philosopher said, be around people who will make you better. It is important for us to look inside ourselves and see the bad habits that keep us from living our best lives. Remember that the decisions we make in the present moment, not the things we did in the past, define us. Let's leave the sadness that used to consume us behind and choose growth, resilience, and a life full of happiness. Regret and guilt are number four. To grow as a person and find inner peace, you must learn to let go of sorrow and guilt. It is important to think about what we did 
and learn from our mistakes. But playing over and over again bad memories only keeps us stuck in a loop of self-blame and negativity. We need to first accept that we are human and will make mistakes in order to break free from sorrow and guilt. We learn important lessons and have chances to grow from our mistakes. Friedrich Nietzsche, a philosopher, once said, that which does not kill us makes us stronger. Unfortunately, mistakes shape us, teach us humility, and help us learn more about other people and ourselves. Instead of focusing on the mistakes we've made in the past, we should focus on forgiving each other. Forgiving ourselves for the mistakes we've made can help us find peace within and make room for growth. I think that when we forgive ourselves, we can start to fix our scars and move on with a new sense of purpose. In addition to forgiving yourself, it's also important to forgive others. Not letting go of anger and grudges only makes sorrow and guilt heavier. Philosopher Epictetus once said, Forgiveness is better than revenge, for forgiveness is the sign of a gentle nature. When we forgive those who have hurt us, we free ourselves from the weight of anger and make room for growth and good energy. Material things are number five. Freeing ourselves from material things that don't make us happy or add value to our lives is essential if we want to find real happiness and inner peace. As people, we get caught up in the web of capitalism, always wanting to get more and more, only to learn that material wealth does not equal true happiness. Let's accept simplicity, get rid of the stuff that doesn't belong, and make room for what does. In this age of excess, it is important to think about why we want to collect things. Are we getting them because we have to, or are they just meeting a need in us? Minimalism forces us to think about what we really want and put what makes us happy first. Instead of giving in to social expectations and selfish standards, we should work on making relationships and experiences that matter. We need to develop a mindset of distance before we can get rid of these things that aren't important. We need to learn to separate our worth from our things, realizing that what really matters is who we are as people, not what we own. By following the principles of minimalism, we can rethink how much we buy and choose to only surround ourselves with things that make us happy and improve our lives. One useful way to become more minimalistic is to clear out our places, one small space at a time. By looking at each thing carefully, we can figure out how important it is and whether it really makes our lives better. Also, we need to think about the messages that ads and social rules send us because they might be steering us away from what we really want. We can slowly develop a modest lifestyle that frees us from unnecessary things and lets us focus on what's important, our relationships, experiences, and personal growth. Comparisons are number six. A very important skill for self-acceptance and personal growth is learning not to compare ourselves to other people. People around us often make us feel bad about our skills, accomplishments, and looks by comparing them to us. This makes us question our own abilities and talents. However, it is important to remember that everyone has their own skills, flaws, and paths. When we accept this, we can stop needing other people to validate and approve of our actions. A famous philosopher once said, comparison is the thief of joy. This quote really hits home because it reminds us that always comparing ourselves to others takes away our happiness and satisfaction. We need to stop comparing ourselves to others and instead focus on our own strengths and ways to get better. Instead of focusing on what other people have done or what we think are their benefits, we should work on developing our own skills. By accepting this theory, we help ourselves understand that our worth doesn't come from comparisons, but from our desire to grow as people and become the best versions of ourselves. We can go through life with a sense of purpose and satisfaction when we don't have to constantly compare ourselves to others.
Let's work on having an attitude that values individuality, sees the beauty in our skills, and accepts the unique path we are meant to take. Instinctive behavior is number seven. It is very important to control your impulses when life gets crazy. We often move without giving it much thought because of these responses, which are based on our instant feelings and instincts. Later, we regret the choices we made. However, if we work on our emotional intelligence and self-control, we can learn to handle situations with calmness and thought, going beyond our naturally spontaneous behavior. That's how living things work, as the wise philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche once said, he who cannot obey himself will be commanded. These words hit us deep down, getting to the core of what drives us and pushing us to try to control our rash actions. We and the people around us can be deeply affected by our impulsive actions. They make it hard to get along with other people, grow as a person and make progress in many areas of life. We can better understand our own feelings and motives by learning emotional intelligence. Being self-aware helps us figure out what sets off our spontaneous behaviors so we can stop them before they happen. Furthermore, when we work on having self-control, we take charge of our actions and stop giving in to our sudden urges. Philosopher Epictetus once said, no man is free who is not master of himself. When we accept these words, we begin a journey of self-discovery and personal growth. We let go of our spontaneous nature and become free to respond with thought. Not only do we find personal peace, but we also help make the world a better place to live. Number eight, beliefs that hold you back. Limiting ideas are one of the hardest things to get rid of when we're trying to grow as people. These walls we put up against ourselves hold us back from reaching new levels of success and happiness. We must question and get rid of these limited ideas that live inside us if we want to reach our full potential. Adopting a growth attitude is the first thing that you need to do to get past these problems. We can do anything we set our minds to when we believe that our skills and abilities can be improved through commitment and hard work. First, write down these ideas and ask yourself if they are true. Do they make sense or are they just based on fear? Through self-reflection and meditation, we can learn more about ourselves and find out why we believe the things we do. Once you know what your views are, it's important to show proof that they're wrong. Find examples and success stories that show these limited ideas are not true. Embrace people who see your promise and can offer help and guidance. Finally, it's important to change limited ideas with powerful ones if you want the change to last. Focusing on your skills and praising your abilities will help you develop a positive and powerful attitude. We can break free from their limits and reach our full potential by adopting a growth mindset, questioning these beliefs and replacing them with positive thoughts. Let us start this journey that will change our lives together, letting go of the things that are holding us back and looking forward to a future full of endless potential. Number nine, putting things off. Getting disciplined and having a strong work ethic are important for stopping the cycle of putting things off. It's important to know and set clear goals so that you can organize jobs well. When we have a clear picture of what we want to achieve, we can focus our time and energy on the things that really count. Taking small steps towards success is also a great way to deal with the overwhelmed feeling that comes with big jobs. Putting jobs into smaller, more manageable pieces not only makes them seem more doable, but it also gives you a sense of progress and completion as you go. Discipline and a strong work ethic can help you beat procrastination, which is the enemy of getting things done. Philosopher who is wise says, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. We can form the habit of being productive and efficient by constantly setting priorities and working toward our goals. 
Remember that the path to getting rid of delay is not simple, but it is worth it. In order to grow and reach our full potential, we have to accept the things that make us feel bad and push through our inner reluctance. Let's start this trip together and support and encourage each other as we break free from the ties of procrastination and learn to value discipline and hard work. Number 10. Wanting to be great. When we try to be perfect, we often get stuck in a loop of self-criticism and doubt that never ends. We have unrealistically high expectations for ourselves and expect our lives to be perfect in every way. But trying to be perfect can cause us a lot of stress and worry that stops us from doing anything. I think we should let go of our need for perfection and instead focus on making progress. It's important to realize that flaws and mistakes are normal and necessary for us to learn and grow. We have to get over our fear of failing and see the lessons that come from them if we want to really grow and reach our full potential. We can change how we think about ongoing improvement by seeing these flaws as steps on our path instead of as obstacles. Another useful way to get over perfectionism is to make goals that are reasonable and doable. Instead of trying to be great at everything, we should focus on getting better and making progress. Let go of the need to be perfect and see flaws as chances to grow. This will help us develop an attitude of progress. Being open to our flaws and mistakes is the only way to grow and reach our full potential. Number 11. Being hooked on social media. In this day and age, where technology is an important part of our daily lives, it's impossible to deny that social media sites are appealing and addicting. We seem to be glued to our computers all the time, looking for approval and interaction online all the time. We need to be aware of how bad social media addiction is though, and work hard to break free from its grip. We can have a better relationship with social media if we first set good limits and spend less time on these sites. We should focus on making real-life relationships and doing things that make us truly happy and fulfilled instead of mindlessly looking through endless pages. Epicurus said, We must habituate ourselves to a certain detachment from our desires and not be easily disturbed by the withdrawal of things we love. It may seem hard to get rid of social media from our lives, but it's not. You have to consciously choose not to give in to the urge and fill the void with important conversations and useful activities. Remember that we need to learn how to live in the present as our real selves, instead of just living online. As the wise philosopher Alan Watts said, we can get back our time, energy and inner peace if we recognize how bad social media addiction is and take steps to stop using it. Let us learn from these thinkers' wise words and rise above the shallow things of the digital age. We can build a better, more balanced relationship with technology and relearn what it means to connect with others as a group. We can let our own thoughts and intuitions run wild when we delete things in silence. By making room inside ourselves to hear our inner voice, we make room for knowledge and clarity. By doing this, we take charge of our own lives and choose the parts that are in line with who we really are. We can fully accept Stoicism and find comfort in the depths of our own souls by doing this. I hope that this logical thought has struck a chord with you and I invite you to think about how it can apply to your own life. Don't forget that silence can help you learn more about yourself and grow. Thanks for watching and until we see you again, Stay strong and tough. Some people, called Stoics, think that we can't change other people, events, or our present situation. We are only in charge of our own thoughts, choices, and deeds. So, we should focus on the things we can control and accept the things we can't control with peace of mind. In Stoicism, one of the main goals is to get rid of negative feelings like anger, fear, envy and lust that make us act irrationally and upset our peace of mind. 
Stoics say that these feelings come from having wrong or incorrect ideas about what is good and bad. They say that we can get rid of these emotions by looking at our beliefs and changing them. Relationships with other people, especially those of the opposite sex, are one area of life where Stoicism can help us. Stoics think that we should be kind, fair, and respectful to everyone, no matter what their past is or what gender they are. However, they also warn us of the risks and threats that can come from our sexual wants and ties, and they tell us to be very careful when we're with women. We will talk about a part of Stoicism that is especially important for men in this part of the video, what a man should always keep from a woman. It might sound weird or even sexist, but this is not the case. It comes from the Stoic view of how people are and what men and women should do in society. It comes from the Stoic idea of self-mastery, which says that we should be quiet and humble about some things. What are these things that a guy should never tell a woman? These are eight of them. His flaws. According to the Stoic philosophy, a Stoic man represents a set of unchanging principles that guide his way of life, especially when faced with difficulties and weaknesses. One of the main ideas behind Stoicism is that how someone handles hardship is the only real test of their character. When it comes to his own weaknesses, a Stoic man resists the urge to complain or look for comfort in recognition of his pain. One important part of the Stoic way of life is the idea of enduring everything. This word includes many virtues such as patience, forbearance, acceptance, courage and endurance. Rather than trying to hide your feelings or say that pain doesn't exist, you should face these problems with a clear head. The idea of Stoicism says that people can't change the things that happen to them, but they can choose how to react to those things. Even from people close to him, like his lover or wife, the Stoic man doesn't try to get support or sorrow from others. Instead, he draws on his own power and resilience knowing that the only real source of strength is within oneself. Stoicism puts a lot of value on being able to take care of yourself, which means building up an inner strength that doesn't depend on approval or sympathy from other people. Stoicism takes a different view than common sense, which might say that being open about your weaknesses and asking for help is a sign of strength. Instead of just acting like a Stoic, the Stoic man knows that suffering in silence can be very powerful. He does this to build a strong and calm spirit. This silence is not an attempt to hide feelings. It is a choice to face problems with unshakable inner strength. Most importantly, the Stoic man doesn't let his flaws make him doubt himself or lose confidence. He instead sees these flaws as chances for development and self-improvement. According to the Stoic view, Every problem and struggle is an opportunity to become a better, stronger person. The Stoic man finds the raw materials for his own change in weakness. The Stoic sees life as a journey of never-ending self-discovery and control. Every problem is not a problem, but a stepping stone that gives you a chance to get better at living a good life. By following this philosophy, the Stoic man finds a deep sense of purpose and satisfaction in meeting the unknowns of life with calm inner strength. Even though the world is full of chaos and uncertainty, the Stoic man shows how strong a controlled mind and an unbreakable spirit can be. How to deal with mistakes in the Stoic philosophy is very deep and helpful, especially when thinking about how a man and a woman interact with each other. Stoics view Mistakes as crucial stepping stones on the path to knowledge and self-improvement, not just as oversights or errors. So, a Stoic man handles his mistakes with a mix of respect, hard work, and learning from his own mistakes. One important part of the Stoic way of dealing with mistakes is not telling everyone about them, especially women, because it could be seen as a sign of stupidity or foolishness. With this point of view, Hiding your flaws out of shame or fear is not the point. 
Instead, it comes from knowing that mistakes are opportunities to learn. The stoic man knows that talking about his mistakes might not always make things better in a relationship or conversation. The virtues of humility and care in the eyes of a stoic guide one's reaction to mistakes. A stoic man knows that to err is human, but he doesn't make mistakes all the time. He does his work and makes choices after giving them a lot of thought, which makes mistakes less likely. When he does make a mistake, though, he doesn't try to hide it. His attitude is that he sees them as chances to improve himself. One important part of Stoic practice is learning from your mistakes. The Stoic man thinks about his mistakes without beating himself up or feeling too guilty. Instead, he does it with a clear head, trying to figure out what went wrong and what lessons can be learned from it. This process of thinking about and analyzing one's mistakes is important for turning them into useful life lessons that make one smarter for future similar situations. A stoic man also learns from his mistakes by being disciplined and persistent. He knows that getting better is an ongoing process that needs constant work. He doesn't let his mistakes define him. Instead, he uses them to make himself better and change for the better. One of the most important Stoic ideas is to own up to your mistakes. The Stoic man doesn't play the blame game. He doesn't blame others or feel bad about blaming himself. He owns up to what he did and the results of it, and he focuses on how he can fix things and avoid making the same mistake again. That's exactly what the Stoic philosopher Epictetus meant when he said, it is not the things that happen to us that bother us, but our opinions about them. This deep statement shows the Stoic belief that how we see and react to events, even our own mistakes, determine us how they affect us. Finally, the Stoic man's way of dealing with mistakes is a complex one that includes respect, learning, and taking responsibility for one's actions. By viewing mistakes as chances for growth and sticking to Stoic virtues, he handles mistakes not with deception, but with the goal of developing inner resilience and knowledge. His better knowledge of life and his desire to always improve himself help him get through it. He had dreams. The Stoic view of hopes and dreams comes from a philosophy of reality, logic and self-sufficiency. In this way of thinking, the Stoic man tackles his dreams with a unique mix of realism and focus, staying away from ego and fantasy. This philosophy changes how he acts and talks, especially when he wants to talk to a woman about his hopes and dreams. From a Stoic point of view, hopes and goals are not the same thing as silly fancies or impossible fantasies, People instead see them as worthwhile activities that fit with their values and skills. So, a stoic man is careful about telling other people about his dreams, not to keep them secret, but to avoid falling into the trap of pride and the need for approval from others. This self-control is not a sign of not wanting to succeed. It comes from the stoic idea of focusing on what one can change and control. Stoics believe that following your dreams is not based on wanting praise or attention from other people, including a love partner. The Stoic man is led by his inner sense, finding contentment and happiness through self-improvement and achieving goals that are true to his self. He knows that looking for approval from other people can leave him feeling let down and take away from his real goal of improving himself. Focusing on responsibilities and attainable goals is a Stoic practice that is linked to this way of thinking about dreams. The Stoic man focuses his energy on goals that he can reach and uses his passion and sense of purpose to do things that make his life and the lives of those around him better. He knows that wasting time and energy on things he can't change or that don't affect his happiness is not a good idea. The Stoic man also has a strong sense of independence and self-reliance when it comes to his dreams. He doesn't depend on other people to form or support his goals. Instead, he trusts his own judgment and inner voice, 
and he uses his inner resources to reach his goals. Being self-reliant doesn't mean he doesn't want help from other people. It means he believes he can choose the path of his life. An important quote from the Stoic Emperor Marcus Aurelius sums up this philosophy. The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. This quote supports the Stoic idea that true happiness and fulfillment come from within and are shaped by the nature and quality of one's thoughts and perspectives. Stoics don't see dreams as just wishful thinking. They see them as signs of a careful, purpose-driven mind. Realisticism, self-reliance, and a focus on one's own values and skills are the main ways that a Stoic man thinks about his goals. He looks at his goals through the lenses of what is realistic and what makes him feel good about himself. He wants to reach goals that will make him truly happy and that are in line with his values. The Stoic dedication to leading a life led by careful, purposeful and self-sufficient principles is exemplified by this measured and introspective approach to dreams. Stoicism is a very deep intellectual branch, and the Stoic man's relationship with his emotions and feelings is a complex study of self-awareness, attention, and controlling negative emotions. Stoic ideas say that we should understand our feelings instead of trying to hide them. He deals with his emotions in a healthy way, knowing that they affect his decisions and actions. People often think that to be Stoic, you have to control your emotions, but a Stoic man doesn't try to do that. He instead holds them with a deep awareness and attention. According to the Stoic philosophy, feelings are not enemies that need to be beaten, but rather signs that tell you important things about your inner state. The Stoic man learns more about himself and is better able to handle the challenges of life when he recognizes and understands his feelings. The Stoic man is very aware of how his emotions and feelings might affect the decisions and actions he makes. Stoicism says that a wise person doesn't let their feelings take over their thinking. Instead, they use emotional intelligence to make smart decisions. By keeping this balance, the Stoic man makes sure that his reactions to outside events are led by a thoughtful and deliberate thought process rather than by passing feelings. The Stoic man is aware of his feelings, but he is careful about how he shows them to other people. This choice isn't an act of pretending not to care about his feelings. It comes from a real desire to show his feelings in a way that is acceptable and helpful for those around him. His knowledge makes him aware that showing his feelings to anyone, even his lover or wife, may not always be good for relationships. Another reason the Stoic man chooses to hide some of his feelings from others is that he wants to appear logical and calm. Not being emotionally detached is not the goal of Stoicism. The goal is to control your feelings. By picking and choosing when and how to talk about his feelings, he tries to show that he is calm and logical so that he doesn't seem nuts or highly emotional to other people. According to the Stoic philosophy, Feelings and emotions are not thrown away. Instead, they are improved and used to learn more about oneself and become wise. Stoics deal with their feelings in a way that shows how reason and emotion can work together in harmony, creating a dynamic balance that leads to a life of balance, resilience and careful interaction with the world. To sum up, the Stoic man's way of dealing with his emotions is a complex dance between knowing himself, being emotionally intelligent, and knowing when to show his feelings. In the big picture of Stoic virtues, the way he deals with his feelings is like a brush stroke that draws a picture of a thoughtful, logical, and emotionally intelligent person managing the complicated landscapes of life. How he kept his secrets. In Stoic philosophy, Keeping personal secrets is closely linked to the ideas of honor, privacy, and respecting oneself and others. A Stoic man shares his thoughts in a certain way because of this point of view, especially when he is with a woman. Stoics don't believe in keeping secrets just for the sake of keeping them. 
Instead, they believe in knowing the value of privacy and keeping one's honor. Stoics believe that secrets show what a person is like inside and what they've been through. People are very careful with them, not because they might hold something embarrassing or bad, but because they protect privacy and personal honor. A man who is stoic respects the privacy of his own thoughts and feelings and knows that not everyone, not even close friends and family, needs to know everything about his life. In stoic thought, discretion is a very important trait and it leads how a stoic man deals with other people. He doesn't spread rumors or lies about other people because he knows that doing so hurts his own reputation and breaks people's trust. He decides to keep his mouth shut out of respect for the privacy of both himself and others, not out of fear of being found out. This restraint is a testament to his regard for the importance of maintaining personal space and maintaining the secrecy of sharing information. Honesty and dependability are very important to Stoics. The man with the Stoic face is determined to keep his word and stay honest. He doesn't deliberately lie or betray other people because he knows that doing so would go against his morals and hurt their trust in him. His respect stretches to how he handles his own secrets and the secrets that other people have given him. How the stoic man handles secrets is also marked by a caring and caring attitude. He doesn't tell or use other people's secrets, not even his own. Instead, he looks out for them because he knows that doing so shows respect for their privacy and honor. This defensive attitude isn't meant to hide the truth or avoid taking responsibility. Instead, it's meant to protect the sacredness of personal experiences and inner lives. A big part of how Stoics handle secrets is trusting themselves. The stoic man relies on his own sense of right and wrong to decide what to share and what to keep private. He trusts his self with his secrets. His confidence in his capacity to control his own inner world is reflected in this self-trust, not in isolation or fear of others. The stoic philosopher Cicero said, the most sacred thing in the world is the human soul which perfectly captures the stoic belief in the holiness of the inner self, which includes one's thoughts, feelings, experiences, and secrets. For the stoic man, keeping his secrets safe and respecting the secrets of others is a way to honor the soul as something holy. To sum up, the stoic man's way of keeping his secrets is a careful mix of honor, privacy, and respect. He knows that not every part of his life needs to be shared and values the privacy and respect of his inner life. He cares about privacy, reliability and protecting personal limits, which shows that he values the purity of the human soul. Following this way of life makes the Stoic man embody the ideals of Stoicism, living a life marked by honesty, privacy and developing a good and honorable inner self. Sixth, his pains in the tapestry of Stoic thought. The Stoic man's attitude toward pain is a testament to his courage, resilience, and unwavering dedication to preserving inner tranquility. This point of view has a big effect on how he deals with and talks about his problems, especially when he's in a relationship with a woman. The Stoic view of pain is not about denying or hiding it, but about getting past it and facing problems with a calm and positive attitude. From a stoic point of view, showing your pain in public, especially in a love relationship, could be seen as a sign of pain and suffering. But the man who is stoic doesn't give up when he feels pain. Instead, he takes a stoic and upbeat attitude, knowing that difficulties in life are a normal part of experiencing life. The stoic man's reaction to pain is marked by endurance. He doesn't let his pains control his mood or behavior. Instead, he faces them with strength and patience. Stoicism says that dealing with problems with ease is not a sign of weakness, but of power and resilience. The stoic man believes in this philosophy and chooses to deal with his pain with patience and, surprisingly, joy. 
Even though he is in pain, the stoic man doesn't moan or groan. He instead deals with his pain with kindness and thanks. This choice isn't based on a sadistic need to suffer. It's based on the knowledge that going through pain with grace is a process that changes you. The stoic man knows that pain, like everything else in life, can be a chance to learn more about himself and grow. The stoic philosophy supports a unique way of looking for ways to deal with pain. The stoic man doesn't actively look for comfort or quick relief from his pain. He thinks of pain as a test that will make him stronger. Seeing pain as a chance to learn and grow changes his view of it, making it an important and significant part of his journey. The stoic man's reaction to pain is not an attempt to show weakness or get pity. Instead, he sees pain as a task for himself and a chance to change himself. He focuses his energy on beating difficulties with resilience and keeping a stoic and upbeat attitude by choosing not to show his pain to others. The great stoic philosopher Seneca said, fire tests gold and misfortune tests brave men. This profound statement encapsulates the stoic idea that difficulties and challenges, represented by the fire metaphor, are chances for people to show their true character and resilience. The stoic man takes this test with bravery and strength. In the end, a stoic man's way of dealing with pain is a balanced mix of endurance, joy and growth. He lives up to the stoic ideals of inner strength and tranquility by facing challenges with resilience, keeping a positive attitude and seeing pain as a chance for growth. Through this attitude, the stoic man rises above pain and handles life's challenges in the city with ease and a strong desire to grow as a person. Number seven, his happiness. Stoicism is a way of thinking about the world and one of its main ideas is that happiness should be taken in balance and not in excess. This point of view is especially important when talking about how a stoic guy interacts and dates women. With its focus on morality and self-mastery, Stoicism offers a complex view of pleasure, seeing it as something that can lead to overindulgence and addiction if not handled with care and control. The Stoic man thinks that pleasure is not necessarily bad, but the way we relate to pleasure that needs careful thought. He knows that letting joys rule or corrupt him would go against the Stoic principles of being logical and self-disciplined. That's why he enjoys his pleasures with a sense of balance and reason. The stoic man loves pleasures, but always keeps in mind that they are temporary and could take his attention away from more important things. This way of thinking about happiness isn't about giving up things or being ascetic. It's about finding a healthy and careful way to enjoy life. The stoic man avoids extravagance and indulgence by being careful and controlling his desire for pleasure. In this way, he makes sure that his pleasures don't take over his life, but instead stay as things he can enjoy without giving up his values or health. The path to unhappiness and chaos is viewed as one of craving and wanting joys. Thus, the stoic man develops a mindset that doesn't care about joys. Despite his strong wants, he doesn't let them cloud his judgment or sway him from his morals. He makes sure that his pleasures serve him instead of controlling him by using them in a smart and good way. The Stoic philosophy also emphasizes the value of not wasting or abusing joys. The Stoic man cares more about the quality of his events than the number of them. He wants to keep and improve his joys not by overindulging in them but by knowing how valuable they are and enjoying them with awareness. He can get real pleasure from his joys without falling into the trap of excess or hedonism with this method. The concept of self-regulation guides the stoic man when he is with women. Including relationships, he doesn't look for pleasure in other people or things. Instead, he keeps his mind on controlling his own wants and joys so that they are in line with his stoic virtues. This ability to control himself 
shows how much he values personal ethics and freedom. The great Stoic philosopher Epictetus said, freedom is not obtained by a full enjoyment of what is desired, but by controlling the desire. The Stoic man is an example of this knowledge. He finds freedom and happiness not in unrestrained excess, but in enjoying joys with care and discipline. In the end, a Stoic man's approach to happiness is based on a deep knowledge of how to balance fun and self-control. He supports the ideals of moderation and reason by enjoying joys in a controlled and thoughtful way. He can enjoy the good things in life without falling into the bad habits of excess and luxury because he takes a fair view of things. In this way, he lives his life according to the good principles of Stoicism. Eighth, his love in the light of Stoicism. A unique point of view is taken on the idea of love that stresses freedom, self-sufficiency, and logic. A Stoic man tackles love in a way that doesn't involve too much connection or dependence, led by the Stoicism ideals. This point of view is very important for understanding how Stoics deal with love relationships and emotional ties. For a Stoic man, love isn't about losing yourself in someone else or getting too close to them. Love with reason and freedom is what it's all about. He thinks that love is a feeling that should be guided by knowledge and reason. Because of this way of thinking about love, he can stay independent and self-sufficient even while in a relationship. He loves, but he doesn't let love cloud his judgment or bind him in a way that goes against his values or freedom. The stoic man shows respect, honor, and unity by liking another person. He thinks of love as an exchange of care and respect, not as a way to hold on to or control someone. From this point of view, a relationship can be healthy and balanced as long as both people are free to be themselves and grow on their own. The stoic man also doesn't ask for or expect love in a way that makes the connection hard. What he does instead is value and respect the love he gets, knowing that love is a gift and not a right to be claimed. This way of doing things makes him more grateful and aware of his relationships, which improves the quality and depth of his emotional ties. It's important to note that the stoic man doesn't feel the need to constantly show his love through words alone. He thinks that actions and behaviors that show care, understanding and support are signs of true love. His love is shown by the way he treats his partner and the people he interacts with every day. The Stoic Emperor and philosopher Marcus Aurelius said, the best way to avenge yourself is not to become like the wrongdoer. This quote reflects the Stoic belief in maintaining virtue and character, even in the face of difficulties or negative influences. When talking about love, it means that the Stoic man stays true to his values and doesn't let his feelings make him do things that are against them. Being stoic means that a man's approach to love is a mix between deep feeling and logical knowledge. He loves deeply and honestly, but he is always aware of how important it is to keep his freedom, morals, and good sense. This balanced view of love helps him build important relationships while staying true to the basic ideas of stoicism. This leads to a happier and more peaceful life in the end. Imagine being able to find inner peace and happiness, no matter what was going on around you, in a world that is always trying to tell us how we should feel, think, and act. What you said is not only strong, it's also new. It's not about taking charge of the world, but of our own minds which is much more important and much easier to do. Stoicism teaches us resilience, thanks, and how to live a happy life. But this isn't just about past, it's about you and your life now. In today's world, there is a lot of chaos, but you can still keep your cool. It's about being happy in the little things and staying calm when things get rough. You can turn your dreaded mornings into a powerful starting point for a day full of purpose and joy. Stay with me if you've ever felt like life was too much and you couldn't find a moment of peace, 
or if you're just interested in how old knowledge can be your secret tool in the 21st century, there's a beautiful, easy idea from Japan that goes along with this word that might sound fancy. You need to find the place where your interests, skills, the needs of society, and what you can be paid for all meet. It's the only reason you exist. Imagine having a clear purpose that makes you excited every morning so the thought of hitting snooze doesn't even occur to you. Marcus Aurelius wasn't just religious about keeping a stiff upper lip when life gets hard. He really believed that we're all here to make a difference and offer something important. Every day, he told us, should be seen as a chance to do our job with honesty and energy. Now think about what that means in terms of Ikigai. You need to find what you love and make sure it fits with what the world needs and what you're good at. That's where the magic takes place. But how do you begin to find your Ikigai? It starts with some self-reflection. Ask yourself, what do I really care about? What do I do well? What do people need from me? How can I get paid? Don't worry if you don't get the answers right away. This is about the trip, looking into different parts of your life and hobbies to see where they come together. The search for your Ikigai isn't just a fluffy exercise to make you feel good. It's about building a life full of meaning and happiness. When you connect the things you do every day to your bigger purpose, even the little things become important. Because you're more present and involved, your interactions start to grow. It's easy for you to be creative when you're doing what you love, and happiness in general. Well, it turns into more of a regular friend than a short-term visitor. Take a moment to think about what Ikigai means to you as you set your alarm for tomorrow morning. Anything that would make you want to get out of bed and start the day. Remember that this won't happen overnight. It's a process that will happen slowly. And Marcus Aurelius would tell us that it's about doing the work every day with honor and devotion. Finding your Ikigai isn't just about being happy with your life. It's also about recognizing your place in the bigger picture of life and adding your own unique thread to the story of how people change over time. The ancient Stoics, especially Marcus Aurelius, believed that our actions should have a purpose. They didn't think that we should just do things without thinking, but that we should take steps that are led by our inner sense. This philosophy fits perfectly with how we get ready for the next day, beginning the night before. Here's the deal. How you spend your evening determines how good your morning will be. You might want to watch all of your favorite shows in one sitting or scroll through social media until your eyes hurt. But think about how that will affect your day tomorrow. Your brain needs time to relax, think about what happened, and get ready for the next day. That's why a good routine before bed is important. Think about treating your evening routine with the same care and respect that you would any other important part of your life. It's not about being so strict with yourself that your evenings aren't fun. It's about making a place that supports your health and fits with your plans for the next day. So, limiting computer time an hour before bed isn't a way to keep yourself from relaxing. It's a way to tell your mind it's time to rest, which will help you fall asleep and feel better when you wake up. Making some plans for tomorrow can also make a difference. It might be as easy as writing down your three most important things to do tomorrow. Taking this one step gives you a clear direction and makes sure you wake up with a feeling of purpose. One of the best things about having a stoic attitude is that it helps us see what we can control and let go of what we can't. There are some things about our day that we can't change, but we can change how we start it. Also, don't forget to meditate or take deep breaths to calm down. You shouldn't just do this for fun. It's a powerful way to tell your body it's time to rest. Deep breathing and slow exhalation can help you feel less stressed, slow down your heart rate, and get your body ready for a good night's sleep. It's like hitting the reset button, making sure that when you wake up, you're not only physically refreshed, but also mentally and emotionally. This may seem like a huge job in today's always-on world, but it's essential for setting the tone for your whole day. Picture this. 
the first few minutes of your morning when you're not interrupted by emails, social media alerts, or the news. You, your thoughts, and the peaceful silence of dawn. That's not only nice, it gives me strength. Marcus Aurelius made a strong case for life with purpose and attention. The alerts of old Rome didn't bother him, and believe me, he had plenty of other things to do. Instead, he stressed how important it was to focus on the job at hand and the current time. Even now, what he knew is still true. The quality of your attention decides the quality of your life. So, how can we use this old knowledge in the present day? First, it's about making a place in the morning that is purposely free of electronic distractions. You don't have to avoid technology, but you can choose not to let it control how you start your day. It's tempting to roll over and check your phone right away, but that puts you right into a reactive state where you have to deal with the problems and expectations of the outside world. Give yourself the gift of a calm start instead. Imagine spending the first hour of your day doing things that make you feel good and help you think clearly. It could be reading, relaxing, writing in a diary, or just sitting with a coffee and looking out the window. This isn't a waste of time, it's an investment in your health. Staying away from distractions not only keeps you from getting stressed, but it also builds a reserve of peace and focus that you can use all day. If you want to get more done in the morning, don't add more things to your list. Instead, get rid of the noise that doesn't help you. It's about putting what's important first before the demands of the day start to pull at your attention. This is where the stoic practice of concentrating on what you can change comes in handy. The flood of emails you have to read might not be under your control, but you can choose when and how to read them. That's why you should push yourself to start the day the way you want to. Do not give in to the urge to go online right away. Place yourself in the present and enjoy the peace and possibilities that the morning brings. Remember that each day is a chance to live your life with more purpose, peace, and in line with who you want to be. Let's make our mornings a reflection of that goal, led by the ancient advice of Stoicism and a constant focus on what's important. Stoicism is based on the idea that we should know what we can manage and act with virtue and purpose in those areas. Marcus Aurelius, Seneca and Epictetus weren't just talking about keeping a stiff upper lip when life gets hard. They were also pushing for us to be active in life and take responsibility for our actions and thoughts. This philosophy is embodied by the practice of always waking up. It's a statement that we are in charge of how we start the day and not letting outside forces or whims direct us. Stoicism proposes the strong idea of building a life one step at a time, being happy with each action. It helps us remember that small, steady steps lead to big changes. Some people think that getting up at the same time every day is a small thing, but it's a very important habit that builds on everything else. It means building a solid base for your day so that you're not in a hurry as soon as you wake up, but instead feel in charge and on purpose right away. But here's the thing, being consistent is hard. It should be that way. Sometimes it seems impossible to wake up at the same time every morning in the beginning. You might want to hit the snooze button just one more time because your bed feels so much more comfortable than ever. And this is where the stoic practice of sticking with something comes in. You need to keep telling yourself why you're doing this and how this practice is making you a better person. It means looking past the short-term comfort and focusing on the good things this habit will do for you in the long run. So, becoming a morning person isn't just about the mornings. It's also about having the traits that make you strong, focused and deliberate all day long. It's a way to get better at controlling yourself, making sure your actions are in line with your ideals, and building the life you want to live, one morning at a time. How then can we make uniformity work for us? Set a clear goal for the next day the night before. Remind yourself of the reasons you want to get up at a certain time. Do you want to have more quiet time in the morning to read or think? 
Do you want to work out or just start your day in a more calm and collected way? Then, make a setting that helps you keep up this habit. You could go to bed a little earlier to make sure you get enough sleep, or you could leave your curtains a little open so that natural light wakes you up slowly. When things get tough, remember that Stoics believed in the strength of our own will and how important it is to follow our values. Getting up at the time you choose every morning is more than just the start of the day. It's a promise to yourself, your growth, and living a life with meaning and purpose. It's important to remember one thing amidst all the talk of control, regularity, and rising with the sun. We're human. Humans are also very complicated animals with brains that tend to choose the easiest path, the one that gives us quick satisfaction. This is exactly why starting new habits, like changing the way we spend our mornings, can feel like a fight at first. To be honest though, admitting this fact is very freeing. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just how people are. Let us now bring some stoicism to this idea. Along with encouraging discipline and resilience, Stoicism shows us the value of self-compassion and understanding. Marcus Aurelius often told himself in his private works to be patient and forgiving with himself when he made mistakes. He knew that criticizing oneself for every mistake wasn't the path to development. He instead said, we should admit when we're wrong, learn from it, and then let it go. This way of doing things is very important when we're trying to form new habits, like morning routines. It can be hard the first few days or even weeks. When your alarm goes off, you want to stay in bed as much as possible. And let's be honest, you'll give in to that urge some days. Okay, that's fine. What you do next is very important. Are you hard on yourself and find yourself stuck in a loop of guilt and criticism? Do you take a deep breath, forgive yourself, and decide that tomorrow is a new day to try again? Being patient and forgiving with ourselves is not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of power and knowledge. They mean we're ready to handle the ups and downs with grace because we're in it for the long haul. Understanding our nature, working with it, and gently pushing ourselves toward the habits and life we want are all part of the stoic practice of self-compassion. Also, taking it easy doesn't mean making excuses or letting ourselves always fail to reach our goals. Being aware that progress is a process with learning curves and failures is important. Knowing that every day brings new challenges and chances is important. It's in this daily rebirth that we find our power and resilience. Don't be too hard on yourself as you try to get used to getting up early or any other new habit. Always be ready to try again. Remember the lessons you've learned from failures and enjoy the little wins. It's not enough to just get up early. You need to grow an attitude that's ready to face life's difficulties with a mix of kindness and drive. Just move your alarm clock across the room to see what I mean. Not only is it making it harder to sleep, but it's also a message. It means deciding to start the day on your own terms, even if it means getting out of bed. This is a small thing you can do to fight the pull of sleep and ease and start the day with purpose. In the same way, making your bed every morning might not seem important if you're the only one who will see it, but it's not just making the sheets smooth and the pillows fluffy. You have to remind yourself that your surroundings and how you interact with it are important. It's about making a place that shows the order and respect you're working on inside yourself. I think Marcus Aurelius would say that these little wins are what make an ordered life possible. They are the small decisions we make every day that, though easy to forget, shape who we are over time. All of these little things you do say something about the kind of person you want to be. You have chosen to be someone who values order, control and respect for oneself and one's surroundings. But why pay attention to these little things, since they're easy for everyone to get to? Some of us can't change the big things that happen in our lives, the shifts and turns we didn't see coming. But we have power over how we react to the start of each day, how we treat those around us, 
and how we get ready for the day ahead. This is Stoicism in action, focused on what we can change and letting go of what we can't. Also, these habits aren't just about getting more disciplined for the sake of discipline. They're also about developing an attitude that's ready for the bigger tasks in life. You can train yourself to keep your promises in bigger areas if you can stick to these small acts of control. To become more like the stoic ideal, you need to be able to stick to your plans, stay strong when things go wrong, and approach life with a cool, controlled attitude. Start small as you think about how discipline can help you. Try to find those everyday chances to be more self-controlled and organized. Remember that these are the times when your character is formed. When you wake up in the quiet of the morning and decide to face the day with purpose. Your day and life will have more purpose and meaning if you do these things every day. They're not just jobs or tasks. The idea behind this is simple but very powerful. Telling someone your goals who will both support you and hold you responsible can greatly increase your chances of success. The path to completing your morning routine and eventually your life's purpose becomes less difficult and more fun when you share it with others. If you want to improve yourself, think of your responsibility partner as a friend. This person will tell you of your obligations when you don't want to leave the comfort of your bed in the middle of the night. They are there to cheer you on when things don't seem to be going well and to celebrate your wins, no matter how small. There are two ways to look at this connection, supporting and encouraging each other based on the idea that we're all trying to be the best versions of ourselves. Stoics like Marcus Aurelius, Seneca and Epictetus often talk about how society and connections are important for building character and morality. They believed that sharing knowledge and learning from each other could be powerful. They also believed that knowing you're not alone in your problems could make you stronger. Today, finding an accountability partner is a nod to this old advice. Realizing that the path to self-discipline and purpose is personal, but it doesn't have to be done alone. A person who holds you accountable can also help you see holes in your habit or way of doing things that you might not see on your own. They might give you fresh ideas and views that can help you grow in ways you didn't expect. It's not enough for this partnership to just check in to see if you got up on time or finished your morning exercises. It's about having a deep conversation about what's working and what's not, as well as how you can both help each other make changes. How do you find someone to hold you accountable? Find someone who is excited about growth and self-improvement as much as you are. This person could be a family member, a friend, or even a co-worker. Pick someone you can be open and honest with about your goals, problems, and achievements. You should be clear about what you want to achieve and what kind of help you need once you've found that person. Check in with each other often and be there for each other, giving each other support advice and, if needed, a light push back on track. Remember that finding an accountability partner isn't just about getting push from other people. It's about making a connection that makes both of you feel good. It's about making a place where being honest, open and helping each other are valued and encouraged. Your morning habits and bigger life goals become connected in this space as a group effort to live a more purposeful, focused and satisfying life. A wake-up call to live our lives with meaning and purpose, the stoic practice of contemplating death is. It reminds us not to waste time on pointless things and to focus on leaving a lasting memory. As soon as we wake up in the morning, we have a new chance to connect with life in a useful way, to make the world a better place and to seek personal growth and satisfaction. In his book Meditations, Marcus Aurelius talked a lot about how short life is and how important it is to be good and enjoy the time we have. This wasn't meant to be a sad thought. Instead, it was a freeing understanding that took his mind off of small things and let him focus on his tasks as ruler and as a good person. 
The idea is that if we keep the end in mind, we're more likely to live our lives with purpose and focus, putting the people and things that really matter first. When we think about death during our morning routines, it changes how we start each day. We were given this day, which isn't promised to anyone else. It's not just another day. Realizing this can have a big effect on how we spend our time, the things we do, the people we care about, and the memory we want to leave behind. It tells us to love deeply, live fully, and leave the world a little better than we found it. This stoic practice also helps us keep things in perspective when life throws us problems and setbacks. Things that bother us and get in the way every day lose a lot of their power over us when we remember that time is limited. We become stronger, more focused on our long-term goals and less likely to let short-term problems get in the way of our progress. It makes us more appreciative of the present and encourages us to make the most of it. How can we use this stoic concept in our everyday lives? Every morning, it starts with a moment of thought. Think of the day ahead as a blank slate, a chance to make your life and the lives of those around you better. Ask yourself, would I be proud of how I'm spending my last day? This doesn't mean having a spiritual crisis all the time. Instead, it means learning to deeply value the present moment and the chance to live, learn, and love. When we adopt the stoic practice of remembering death, we are not thinking about the end, but rather about the present and how we choose to live each day. It's a strong way to fight laziness and a lesson to live our lives with purpose, meaning and thanks. As we wake up each day, let's remember that it's a gift and a chance to make our lives meaningful and in line with our core values. This is what it means to live stoically and make the most of our short time here to leave a lasting memory. People often tell us to think about the good things in our lives and picture ourselves being successful and happy. But the Stoics, with their deep knowledge, offer a different point of view that is both useful and very powerful. A tool for resilience, planning, and, eventually, better understanding of the moment. Negative vision is not about being negative. The main idea behind this practice is to think about the problems, losses, or challenges you might face in the future. This could be something as small as missing the bus or having a wet day, or it could be something much worse, like losing a job or a loved one. The purpose is to mentally practice how you would handle such events should they occur, not to dwell on these scenarios in a way that causes fear or worry. When you visualize, you mentally and emotionally get ready. This makes you less likely to get off track when life's ups and downs happen. Marcus Aurelius, Seneca and Epictetus were all of the opinion that we could develop a greater sense of peace and resilience by thinking about how transient everything is. This practice helps us pay attention to the things we can change, like how we react, how we think and what we do. Making negative visualizing a part of your morning habit can change how you start your day. You don't have to go out the door without thinking about the problems that might come up. You're ready to face them. I like to think of it as mental exercise that helps you build resilience so that when life throws you a surprise, you're not caught off guard. You have already practiced this moment in your mind so you can use the plans you made to get through it. This exercise also has a beautiful, if slightly strange, effect. It makes us more grateful for the present moment. When we imagine not having some of the things we take for granted, we value them more when we return to the real world. We should be thankful for all the good things in our lives right now. We shouldn't live in fear of losing something. Instead, we should use the thought of it to appreciate the present moment more. How then can we use negative vision in a good, healthy way? Take a few minutes in the morning to think about the problems you might face that day or the bigger picture of what the future might hold. Think about how you should react, what skills you should use, what lessons you could learn, and how the experience could help you grow. Following the image, let go and go about your day, 
feeling more prepared and grateful for the things that are happening to you right now. Adding thanks to our daily lives, especially at the end of the day, can completely change our mood and wellness. Keeping a gratitude book is a very easy but very powerful way to develop this attitude of thankfulness. It means taking a moment to think about the day and write down a few things we're thankful for before going to sleep. Something like a nice act from a stranger, a stunning sunset, finishing a hard job, or just the warmth of our bed waiting for us at the end of a long day could be this. Writing down what we're thankful for takes our attention off of what we don't have and puts it on the things we do have. Focusing on what we have rather than what we don't, on what is within our power rather than what isn't, is a practice that is perfectly in line with Stoic beliefs. This change in viewpoint not only helps us sleep well at night, without the stress of unmet wants or leftover anger, but it also gets our minds ready to start the next day with purpose and gratitude. But why be thankful at the end of the day? Because it helps us end the day on a positive note, no matter what problems we may have had all day. It helps us remember the good things in our lives, find peace even when things are going badly, and keep a mindset that sees growth and happiness in every situation. Expressing thanks every night has a domino effect that changes not only how we sleep, but also how we wake up and handle our mornings. When we wake up, our first thoughts aren't grumbling about the alarm clock, but about what the day will bring and what new things we might find to be thankful for. Also, this practice of being grateful for our lives goes beyond our own lives. It makes our relationships better because we become more aware of how valuable the people around us are and more vocal about how grateful we are to have them in our lives. It makes us feel more connected to the world because we notice and appreciate the beauty and wonder around us more, even in the most ordinary things. As we think about the many ways to make our mornings better and, by extension, our lives better, let's not forget how powerful it is to end the day with thanks. The stoic desire of a good life is reflected in this practice, a life marked not by accomplishments or material things, but by inner peace, happiness, and a deep respect for the present moment. As we come to the end of this trip through the 10 Stoicism-inspired strategies, it is clear that each step and practice is more than just a job. It is a path to developing a life of purpose, resilience, and deep gratitude. Adopting these habits won't make every day great, but they will make you stronger, more happy, and more able to handle anything that comes your way. It's not just a feeling to believe in yourself. It's a skill and a way of thinking about life. One clear fact about getting to know yourself is that how much you get done depends on how sure you are of yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, your goals and dreams can be taken away. Think about how often fear and doubt stop people with natural talent who are ready to do great things. We want to improve ourselves and find new ways to do that. That being said, thanks for watching this movie. Through Stoicism, you are already on the path to improving your life. First, let's talk about what it means to have confidence in yourself. It doesn't just happen. You have to get to know and accept yourself first. In Stoic thought, self-confidence comes from being aware of our good and bad traits and making the most of them. People have been telling us for a long time that real confidence comes from within, not from other people liking or praising us. Epictetus, a famous Stoic philosopher, advised us to focus on what we can change, such as our attitudes, thoughts and deeds, rather than worrying about things we cannot change. We are stronger and better able to handle hard times when we think this way. Being honest is another important part of having self-confidence. Being honest about who you are, what you stand for, and what you want is important. Living by your own rules instead of what other people think of you gives you a strong sense of inner peace and stability, which is important for having real confidence. To feel more secure, 
It's also helpful to think about and judge ourselves. When we look at ourselves, we can see what we need to work on and what we're proud of. We learn and grow all the time, which helps us know what we can do and get past our fears. A big part of having self-confidence is being strong when we mess up or fail. Stoicism says that we should see problems as chances to learn and get better. Instead of being afraid of our mistakes, we should accept them and learn from them. This makes us stronger and better prepared for what comes next. Last but not least, doing things boosts self-confidence. The Stoics said that it's not enough to think about ideas. You have to put them into practice. Try to live by these ideas every day by meeting your fears, being strong and sticking to what you believe in. You'll gain real confidence that lasts. First, get to know yourself. Learn more about what it means to be aware of yourself. As your confidence grows, stoic self-examination isn't just about judging yourself. It's about getting to the heart of who you are. What matters is not what you can do, but who you are. A famous Stoic thinker named Epictetus says we should really look at ourselves and figure out what our fears and reasons are. Being able to honestly and deeply understand yourself is the key to having real self-confidence. Think about how important it is to know yourself well. It's not enough to know your skills and flaws. You also need to understand how they fit with the things you stand for. The central tenet of Stoicism is that real self-understanding results from examining how your thoughts, feelings and deeds line up. Your confidence is really high because of this game. What does this have to do with our everyday lives? Start by thinking about what you do first when things get tough. Think about whether I'm acting quickly or because it's what I really believe. You build your self-confidence when you act in ways that aren't scared or meant to show off, but because you know yourself and are being honest. Think before you act every day. Take a moment to ask yourself, is this really who I am and what I believe? You are being true to yourself and building your confidence every time you make a choice after giving it some thought. Remember that the first step to building confidence is to understand yourself. Being honest with yourself is the most important thing. It takes time and patience. You'll have to face some hard facts along the way, but you'll also learn new strengths and skills. You need to know that it's okay to not know everything and to feel weak sometimes as you learn about yourself. It's important for your growth as a person to be okay with not knowing everything and to know your boundaries. You are free to try new things when you accept yourself in this way. These new experiences can change how you see the world and yourself. Knowing how strong your thoughts and views are is another important part of getting to know yourself. What you think about yourself and your skills, how you talk to yourself and how you understand things that happen all have a big impact on your confidence. You can change how you think about yourself by talking to yourself more positively and asking yourself why you have worries about yourself. Being self-aware also means being aware of and accepting of your emotions. What makes you feel good and what scares you can tell you a lot. Listen to your emotions and try to figure out why you have them. This will help you figure out what drives you and what you really want. Being honest, staying true to your ideals and always being yourself come from knowing yourself. It's not always easy to be yourself, especially when other people expect you to act a certain way. But being yourself makes you more confidence and helps you build better, more honest relationships with other people. To sum up, the best way to build confidence is to know yourself well. You not only understand who you are better as you learn more about yourself, but you also see the world in a new way and get along better with others. There are many steps in this process that will help you improve yourself. You should also know that some things can't be changed. One important idea in Stoicism is to think about what you can and cannot control. 
truly having confidence that lasts is based on getting this right. It's not about giving up, it's about being okay with how things are. Epictetus, a well-known Stoic philosopher, asserts that what matters most is how we react to what happens to us. It takes courage to accept what you can't do. Things like what other people do and what has already happened are out of your power. Accepting these limits gives you more energy and focus to work on the things you can change, like the things you do, say, and decide. First, look at what you do every day to build your inner power through acceptance. Pay attention to the times you feel helpless and angry. Ask yourself if you're trying to control something that you can't. Your inner will gets stronger when you think about things you can change. This makes you stronger, more flexible, and more sure of yourself. Finally, having real self-confidence means being aware of what you can and cannot handle. You become stronger and more flexible when you accept the things you can't change and work on the things you can. You also become calm, which shows that you have real confidence. Are you okay with what you can't change? That's the second thing Epictetus said. Change what you can. You can feel more calm inside when you think this way. There is more peace when you accept the things you can't change and stop worrying about having to change everything. Being calm makes you think more about what you do and how you can make it better. It helps you deal with tough situations better. Not doing anything isn't really what it means to accept something. It means realizing that we can't change some things. We think about what we can do and what we're good at more now. We feel more in charge and independent when we think this way. It shows us that we can pick how to respond to things in life even if we can't change them. This could mean letting go of anger from the past or worries about what's to come in real life. We can't change the past or know what will happen in the future, but what we do today can make our lives better. To build confidence, it's also important to be kind to yourself, especially when things go wrong. You can think clearly and keep going with purpose if you know that everyone makes mistakes and that's how we learn. Accepting things helps you live a more honest life in the end. You'll have more energy to live by your beliefs and do what you love when you stop trying to control things you can't change. Being honest and having a clear goal makes life more interesting and satisfying and confidence grows on its own. It's good to be okay with things you can't change and work on things you can. This will help you feel more secure. Being aware of what you do and being at peace with the fact that you can't control everything is what this shows you. In this way, you not only gain confidence, but also knowledge and peace of mind, which makes your life better and more important. Third, being able to focus means avoiding everything else and giving attention to what's important. The Stoics say that what we think about a lot affects how good our life is. It's about making smart decisions about what to focus on and what to ignore. Marcus Aurelius said that the thoughts we have shape our lives. It takes practice and self-control to pay attention to what's important. It's hard to stay focused when there are so many things going on around us. This is where stoic methods really shine. They teach your mind to ignore things that aren't important, which helps you focus on your real dreams and goals. Find out what's distracting you before you try to avoid it. A lot of people worry too much, use social media too much, or try to make everyone happy. Once you know what they are, you can do something to lessen their effect. You could learn to say no to things that don't fit with your beliefs, or set times when you don't use technology. Not only that, but some activities can help you focus better. Like meditation, it helps you train your mind to be in the present moment. Figure out what you need to do every day is another good idea. Checking yourself. What's the most important thing I need to do today? It gives everything you do more purpose and boosts your confidence as you live your life the way you want to. Remember that attention isn't just a skill, it's how you live your life. If you focus on the important things and ignore the rest, 
you not only get more done, but you also feel calm, which is very important for being sure of yourself. That's how Stoics see how important it is to concentrate. Fourth, make yourself stronger. Stoicism teaches us a very important lesson. You don't are born tough, you learn to be tough. Stoic toughness is more than just getting through hard times. It means seeing problems as chances to make things better. Not what happens to you, but how you deal with it. That really shows who you are, said Seneca. In Stoicism, it's important to learn from your mistakes. Every issue or tough situation has a lesson hidden inside it. When things go wrong, don't feel bad. Instead, ask yourself, what can this teach me? When you think about it this way, every mistake you make is a chance to get better and become stronger. Being robust actually entails developing stoic toughness when things are difficult. Trouble doesn't scare you or make you run away. You face it head on. When you face your fears and get through them, you get stronger and more sure of yourself. Remember that being tough isn't just about getting through tough times. It's also about finding the good in them. Every day can look different when you use resilience. You might have to do something you've been putting off or deal with something big, like getting over a loss. Think like a stoic. How you handle things is more important than what occasions you face. When bad things happen, you should be sure of yourself and know that every bad thing is an opportunity to get better and stronger. This is what it means to be stoic, to turn problems and hard times into strengths and ways to move forward. If you stay strong, your confidence will grow even more. Accepting that life won't always be easy or fair is also part of being strong. It means knowing that we can get through hard times. It's not about giving up when we accept that hard times are a part of life and that we're strong enough to deal with them. Think about the long term instead of just worrying about today's problems if you want to be tough like a stoic. You have to think about the future and see how these hard times can help you get better in the long run. Another great way to get stronger is to be thankful. Thoughts about what you have instead of what you don't have can help you stay upbeat even when things are tough. Being thankful changes the way you see problems so that you see them as chances to learn and get better. Being tougher gets better when you get help from other people and are part of a group. During hard times, it's very helpful to be with people who care about and understand you. You feel better when you connect with other people and they also tell you that you're not facing problems by yourself. Being tough as a Stoic is a promise to keep growing in the end. It means seeing every event, good or bad, as a chance to learn something new about yourself and the world around you. This way of thinking helps you enjoy the ups and downs of life, believing that you can handle and achieve no matter what. In conclusion, being Stoic is a great way to deal with life's challenges. When things get tough, we should face them, learn from them, and use them to get stronger and more sure of ourselves. Being strong and tough helps us not only get through hard times, but also get better, stronger, and more sure of ourselves. Fifth point, be more humble. It's easy to act too proud when you're trying to be sure of yourself, but having confidence doesn't mean being cocky. One of the best traits a person can have is humility, which is very important in Stoic thought. Epictetus said, if you think you know everything, you can't learn anything new. Being humble helps you learn, get better, and connect with other people in a real way. When you choose between humility and vanity, you're not picking between weakness and strength. You're choosing to understand your own limits and value the knowledge and worth of others. A humble person knows that they can always learn something new and get better no matter how smart or skilled they are. Epictetus says that being humble doesn't mean putting yourself down. It means having a good view of yourself and realizing that you're not the most important person in the world. It can be hard to become more humble every day, especially when people care more about how things look than what they are. Listen more and talk less. 
Be open to what other people have to say and know that you don't have to be right all the time. When you do well, let other people know. Remember that everyone you meet has been through things you haven't. When you become more humble, your confidence grows steadily and over time. People respect and look up to you more because you're more open, flexible and interesting. Being truly humble not only makes you a better person, it also helps you connect with other people better. Be humble. That's the stoic way to real deep confidence. To be humble, you have to be able to see and praise other people's wins and good points. This shows them that we value them and helps us see how each person brings something unique and important to the table. This helps us value how different people are and how their success doesn't make someone else's less important. When we are humble, we recognize that we don't know everything and that we may need help from people who do. It means you're strong, not weak. We can improve our relationships and grow as people when we are willing to learn from each other and work together. Being humble also means taking a moment to consider what we did, admitting when we were wrong and trying to make things right. To improve yourself, it's very important. When we know our skills and flaws, we can build real confidence with this kind of honest self-check. Being grateful for what we have, our friends and family, and the chances we get is part of being humble. It helps us pay attention to what's important. Being thankful keeps us connected to the world and to each other, making us feel like we're a part of something bigger. To sum up, one of the most important stoic traits for building strong, long-lasting confidence is humility. To always learn from other people and our surroundings, to treat people with respect and honesty, and to value ourselves without thinking too highly of ourselves are all good things. Being more humble makes us better people and the world a better place to live by showing more care, respect and connection. Sixth point, know what you believe and live by it. Real, long-lasting confidence comes from living in a way that supports the things you believe in. You need to live by your beliefs every day, not just know them. Stoics believe it is very important to be honest and true to oneself. People must act on their beliefs in order to make good decisions and shape their lives. As Epictetus said, talking about doing the right thing isn't enough. You have to actually do it. Believe in the things that matter most to you, like being honest, loyal, brave or kind. Figure out what's most important to you and follow those rules. When you live with integrity, what you say and do is in line with what you believe and value. You feel better about yourself every time you choose to be true to yourself, overtaking the easy way out, even when other people attempt to get you to change your mind. You show yourself that what you believe is true and important to you. Start with small changes in your daily life to make sure what you do matches what you believe is right. If you value honesty, you should always tell the truth, even if it's tough. Don't worry about being seen when you're nice. Just help other people and be nice. You can become the person you want to be by doing these little good things every day. Always keep in mind that living by your beliefs is a process, not a destination. Of course you will make mistakes along the way, but what counts is that you learn from them. You become more self-assured in your true self and a good example for others when you establish and uphold your own beliefs. To live a happy, meaningful and sure of yourself life, you must stay true to your beliefs. Being true to your beliefs means telling people the truth, keeping your promises and acting in a way that shows what's important to you. Being honest about what you think not only makes you feel better, but it also builds trust in other people. To live by your beliefs, you have to take responsibility for what you do and the things that happen because of it. When you own up to your mistakes and make things right, you show that you care about your values. Regularly reflecting on your actions is very important. Giving yourself time to think about what you've done and chosen helps you make sure you're living to your values. 
a great way to keep growing and getting better is to do this self-check every so often. Seventh tip, every day, show thanks. For stoicism to work and self-confidence to grow, you need to practice thanks. It's not enough to be grateful for the big things in life. You should also value the little things and be thankful for them. Think of what a valuable gift it is to be living, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love, as Marcus Aurelius once said, a warm day, a good cup of coffee, or the smile of a loved one could be all it takes. This practice helps you feel good by shifting your attention from what you don't have to what you do have. Being grateful also means noticing the work of others. Be thankful for the help and support you get from family, friends, and even strangers. Thanking people makes ties stronger and creates a group of people who will support you. Appreciating the problems you face is another part of being grateful. Instead of seeing them as problems, see them as chances to learn and grow. Your understanding and acceptance of life's difficulties grow as a result of this viewpoint, which also increases resilience. Eighth point, be open to learning and being interested. Getting more knowledgeable and skilled makes you feel more confident. Being curious about the world and yourself is an essential component of a stoic approach to learning. Epictetus said, only the educated are free. You should make a promise to yourself to learn something new every day. It could be a fact, a skill, or a new way of looking at things. This constant learning keeps your mind busy and active, and it also makes it easier for you to handle new situations. Being curious also means being open to different points of view. Talk to people whose views and experiences are different from your own. This helps you learn more, empathize with others, and accept differences. Do not forget that learning is an ongoing process that will enhance your confidence and knowledge over time. To sum up, Stoicism helps you build self-confidence by teaching you to be tough, humble, and grateful, as well as by living by your own views and being open to learning new things and being curious all the time. These principles will help you live a happier, stronger, and more confident life where problems are seen as chances to learn and grow, and every moment is a chance to do so. A single step is all it takes to become great. You know, life is kind of like an unknown journey. Every day we have a chance to change our fate. The old Stoics, who were very wise, knew this very well. Not only were they deep thinkers, but they were also realists who were in touch with the processes of life. Think about a quiet night at the end of the month. You're thinking about the past week and the one that's coming up. It's not enough to make empty resolutions. You need to start habits that will really make a difference in your life. Here are 10 easy habits for going from 2024 to 2025 that are based on old stoic knowledge. You should not only think about these things, you should also do them every day. Don't worry, we'll keep things easy. Simple, useful, and ready to use in your everyday life. This is stoicism made easy. Start out small. George Washington, whose determination helped build a country, loved the simple Scottish phrase, many mickles make a muckle. It says that the big things are made up of the little things. Zeno, the father of Stoicism, was also right when he said, well-being is realized by small steps, but it's no small thing. He knew that change doesn't happen all at once, but in small, careful steps. You can think of it like planting seeds. Each little seed has the ability to grow into something beautiful. What does this mean for us? Say you want to read more. Don't make a huge goal. Instead, Commit to writing one page every day. As you put together the small pieces, they all fit together to make the big picture. Don't forget that a walk starts with one step and a habit with one deed. Atomic Habits by James Clear beautifully expresses this feeling. The most important thing about atomic habits is not just that they can explode, but also that they are fundamental. 
even though it is the smallest measure, an atom has a lot of power. In the same way, our tiny habits are what make big changes possible. A stoic secret is that it's not enough to just do small things. You also need to think small. Don't fall for big claims that you can't keep. Instead, pay attention to what's in front of you, what you can do right now. As you keep adding these small wins, you'll see that they add up to big changes. Don't forget that every river starts out as a small stream. Let's remember how powerful it is to start small as we move into 2024. No matter how small, Zeno would say, an act of kindness is always worth it. Stop letting your worry take over your life. We all have to deal with a storm that doesn't come from the sky, but from inside us. Worry. There's a ghost that follows us and talks about what might happen or what could go wrong. But here's a stoic truth. You're not a doll and stress shouldn't be the one who moves you around. Marcus Aurelius, who ruled an empire, knew this when he relaxed and thought. He wrote, Today I got away from stress. Or no, I threw it away because it was inside me. That's a powerful discovery. It's not the plane or the airport that's rough. It's us. How do we get off of this chain that we can't see? First, take responsibility for how you feel. Know that your thoughts, not the world around you, cause your worry. It's like a smoke that obscures your view and elevates small issues to major issues. Get rid of that fog and see things as they really are, not how your fears make you see them. This is where being aware comes in handy. Ask yourself, is this worry caused by what's happening or what I fear might happen? Take a moment to calm down. Most of the time, it will be the second one. Lastly, let's bust a myth. Worry is not a way to avoid problems before they happen. In fact, the reverse is true. It stops you from moving. It doesn't prepare you. Going nowhere is like sitting in a moving chair. You move around a lot, but don't get anywhere. Let's make a promise to free ourselves from the chains of worry as we move into the new year. Let's go through life with a calm heart and a clear head. You have power over your mind, not outside events, Aurelius says. If you understand this, you will be strong. Don't forget that the only storm you have to face is the one inside you. Set up a plan. Think of today as a blank slate. Without a plan, it's just empty room that will be filled in any way that seems right. It's a work in progress without a plan though. The power of a schedule is not in being strict, but in giving you a way to focus your energy in the best way. Seneca, a stoic philosopher whose ideas have been around for hundreds of years, said, life without a design is erratic. He knew that a well-planned day is a good day. How then do you make this routine? You shouldn't try to copy someone else's plan. You should make your own that works for you. Find out what time of day you're most productive to begin. Are you like me and love the quiet hours of dawn? Or does your energy level rise as the day goes on? Plan your day around this natural flow. Your best hours should be used for the most important jobs that need your full attention and imagination. For me, it's about taking charge of the morning instead of letting it take over. Before everyone else wakes up, I start my day with things that make me feel good, like going for a walk, taking some time to think, or working on an artistic project. But don't forget that a pattern isn't just about work. It's also about finding the right balance. Develop habits that are good for your mind, body, and spirit. It could be reading, working out, or spending time with people you care about. And most importantly, do what you normally do. Always being the same is what holds everything together. You'll find that this pattern helps good habits grow as you strengthen it. After all, Seneca says, principles are necessary. And what is a daily routine if not a rule you follow? Accept the framework and see how the unsure chaos turns into a peaceful and productive music. Tell yourself to stop. Over the years, there is a story that keeps coming up. It's not about a fight or an invasion, but about a personal win. 
The choices Dwight D. Eisenhower made changed history, but he also had a terrible habit. He smoked four packs a day. His doctor's words were a clear warning. Stop or bad things will happen. What did Eisenhower say? He told himself to stop. After 40 years, he quit all of a sudden. It shows a very important stoic principle. No man is free who is not master of himself. As Epictetus said, this story isn't just about giving up smoking. It's about giving up any vice that holds you back. We all have problems, whether they are bad habits, putting things off, or negative thoughts. Telling yourself to stop is the key to winning. It's about taking charge of your urges instead of having them run your life. The beauty of Stoicism is in realizing that we are the ones who control our own chains, as another Stoic teacher, Seneca, once said. How does this fit into your life? Pick out that one thing. It could be that extra cup of coffee, a never-ending scroll through social media, or any other habit that gets in the way of your goals. Realize how it's changing your life and then make up your mind to stop. It's not about making changes slowly, it's about taking a clear, intentional move. You're not just breaking a habit when you tell yourself to stop. You're taking back your freedom. As you move into the year 2024, remember this powerful message. You are in charge of your own life, and the first thing you need to do is master yourself. Free up time, which is a valuable resource. The most important thing we have is wasted on small things all the time, our screen time shows that we really do feel like we don't have enough time. We don't need more time. We just need to make good use of the time we have. Stoicism tells us to pay attention to what's important. As the famous philosopher Epictetus put it, if you want to improve, be willing to appear clueless or stupid about some things. This means choosing not to get caught up in digital distractions like doom scrolling, reading too much news, or other things that aren't necessary. The plan is twofold. Be aware and do something. First, pay close attention to how your time is spent. Keep track of what you do for a day or a week. You'll be surprised at how much time we waste on things that don't really matter. The first step toward change is becoming aware of this. Next, make a decision and act on it. Cut down on the time you spend on these things to start. Limit how much you use apps, schedule times to read the news, and don't just surf the web for no reason. Not cutting yourself off from the world is the point. The point is to choose not to drown in it. Once you get your time back, you'll have more for the important things in life, like reaching your goals, taking care of your relationships, and growing as a person. This habit helps you handle your whole life, not just your time. It's about making sure that the valuable hours in your day are spent on things that make your life better, not worse. Let's remember Epictetus' words as we move into the year 2024 and spend our time and energy on things that really help us grow and be happy. Don't forget that every minute you waste on something pointless is a minute you lose on something important. Try to do something hard. Seneca, a renowned Stoic, didn't just make goals at the start of each new year. He made a statement. He jumped into the Tiber River, which was very cold. It wasn't for a swim. It was a show of power over himself. This is what he said. I'm in charge. It wasn't about how cold the water was. It was about how it made them feel. Self-assurance and resilience are on fire. It's a strong lesson that doing something hard can be the most powerful thing you can do. How can we use this stoic lesson in our everyday lives? We need to get out of our comfort zone to start. Pick something that will test you and make you feel a little nervous. It could be anything, like getting up an hour early, taking a cold shower, standing up in a meeting, or even learning something new. Making yourself push your limits is more important than the job itself. When things are hard, that's when we grow the most. It's where we find out what we're really capable of. Not the difficulty of the practice itself, but the fact that you have to fight your feelings. 
It shows how strong you are on the inside and that you are more than your fears and doubts. When you set out to do something hard, remember Seneca's unspoken message, I am in charge of my thoughts, actions, and responses. 2020 should be the year you take on new challenges and show yourself that you can handle them. In the end, we don't just live when things get tough, we grow. Get together with people who make you better. We are shaped more by the people we hang out with than we think. Like going for a walk in the woods, the tracks you pick decide where you end up. This idea isn't new. The Stoics knew how powerful groups could be. The importance of surrounding oneself with people who encourage growth and knowledge was proven by Seneca in his writing. He wrote once, associate with those who will make you a better man. This isn't just about picking friends. It's also about picking people who will change your life and character. How does this apply to the world we live in now? First, look at your circle very carefully. Who do you spend the most time with? Do they have the traits you look up to and want to have? It's not about finding great people. It's about finding people who share your ideals, push you and help you grow. Putting yourself in this kind of dirt is like putting yourself in a place where you can grow. Remember that if you hang out with slow people, you'll start to limp too. It's not enough to just stay away from bad effects. You should also actively seek out good ones. Make your own stoic circle, which could be a book club, a study group, or just a group of friends who want to improve themselves. Do things that make your mind and spirit stronger. Talk about your ideas, argue intellectually, and push each other. You'll find that you don't just rise to the situation, you rise above it if you surround yourself with people who push you to be better, as Seneca said. 2024 should be. This is the year you take care of your yard of effects and make sure that each person in it helps you on your journey through life. Don't be afraid of change. Learning to ride the waves is a lot like accepting change. If you fight it, you'll get tossed around but if you adapt, you'll be moved forward. During his deep thoughts, Marcus Aurelius thought about how things change. He knew that the beat of life is a steady ebb and flow of change. When we are afraid of change, we miss out on all the wonderful chances and options that come with it. It's not enough to just accept change. You have to welcome it with open arms. To make this a part of your life, you should first change the way you look at things. Don't see change as a danger. See it as something that will happen and is exciting. It's a chance to learn, grow, and try new things. Dare yourself to leave your comfort zone this year and try something new, whether it's a hobby, a new job, or even a new way of thinking. Those times when things are unclear and new are often when we grow the most and are happiest. Develop an attitude of adaptability as well. Learn to be flexible when things change, like a tree that bends in the wind but doesn't break. Being able to adapt doesn't mean being inactive. It means constantly looking for ways to do well in new situations. As you go through life's changing landscapes, keep in mind what Marcus Aurelius said. The universe changes. Our life is what our thoughts make it. Let 2024 be the year you ride the waves of change with skill and grace, seeing every new challenge as a chance to learn more about yourself and grow. Say no to things that aren't necessary. When there are a lot of options and things to do, being able to say no is like having superpowers. Marcus Aurelius, who was in charge of a kingdom and had to deal with a lot of problems, knew that insight was power. He was smart to point out that a lot of what we do isn't necessary. Saying no to things that aren't necessary not only frees up time, but it also helps us focus on what's important. It's about getting rid of the unnecessary stuff to make room for the important things. Make this a part of your life by first looking at the things you've promised to do. Do they fit with your goals and values? It's easy to get caught up in a vortex of busy work that doesn't really advance our purpose. Learn how to say no to these things that will distract you. 
Not being friendly or helpful doesn't mean you're being distant. It means having limits that let you focus on things that really matter to you. Remember that whenever you say yes to a small thing, you're really saying no to something big. Turn this around. Your yeses should count. Say yes with all your heart to things that make your life better, like personal growth, relationships, or your hobbies. This chosen yes is more than just an answer. It's a promise to do great work in the areas that really count. As you start the new year, only say yes to things that will help you become the person you want to be. Get back in time. Accepting our flaws and mistakes is part of accepting our humanity. Marcus Aurelius, a leader who had to deal with the difficulties of life and power, knew that people would fail. He once thought about how important it is to not only get back up when we fall, but also to see the beauty in the fact that we can. We need to understand that tripping is a part of our journey and not a break from it. Adopting an attitude of forgiveness and resilience is what this entails practically. Do not see it as a failure if you fail to stick to your diet, work out, or other goals. Think of it as an important part of the growth process instead. The important thing is how you handle these obstacles. Do you scold yourself or do you admit you made a mistake and gently guide yourself back on track? Choose the second option. It's about making self-compassion and determination a habit. You build the habit of resilience every time you go back to your path. Feel proud that you can get back to your beat, no matter how many times you lose it. Remember that it's not about being perfect. It's about making progress and always going back to what's important. The important thing is not what happens to you, but how you handle it, as Epictetus said. As we draw this exploration to a close, remember that the journey to infuse your life with deeper meaning through Stoicism is both profound and rewarding. It's a path that invites reflection, demands resilience, and fosters a harmonious balance between the inner self and the external world. The Stoic principles we've delved into offer more than just philosophical musings. They provide practical tools for navigating life's challenges with grace and wisdom. Embracing Stoicism isn't about detaching from the world or suppressing emotions. Instead, it's about achieving clarity of thought cultivating inner peace and living in alignment with your core values. By applying these age-old teachings to your modern life, you can discover a wellspring of strength you may not have known you possessed. Remember, a meaningful life is not handed to us. We forge it through our actions, decisions and reflections. As you continue on your journey, keep the teachings of Stoicism close to your heart. Let them guide you through turbulent times, illuminate your choices, and enrich your everyday experiences. Thank you for taking this journey with us. May the path ahead be enlightening, enriching, and profoundly meaningful.